Canto. Chapter 43. Rinaldo from his courteous landlord hears. What folly had destroyed his every good. Next learns another story, as he steers. Toward Ravenna with the falling flood. Then last arrives where, conqueror o'er his foes. Orlando was, but in no joyful mood. He, that the child a Christian made Wylera. Christened Sabrino, and heals Olivier. O execrable avarice! O vile thirst! Of sordid gold! It doth not me astound! So easily thou seizest soul, immersed! In baseness, or with other taint unsound! But that thy chain should bind, amid the worst! And that thy talon should strike down and wound! One that for loftiness of mind would be! Worthy all praise, if he avoided thee! Some earth and sea and heaven above us square. No nature's causes, works, and properties. What her beginnings, what her endings are. And soar till heaven is open to their eyes. Yet have no steadier aim, no better care. Stung by thy venom, then, in sordid wise. To gather treasure, such their single scope. Their every comfort, and their every hope. Armies by him are broken in his pride. And gates of warlike towns in triumph passed. The foremost he to breast the furious tide. Of fearful battle, to retire the last. Yet cannot save himself from being steed. Till death, in thy dark dungeon prisoned fast. Of others that would shine thou dimst the praise. Whom other studies, other arts would raise. What shall of high and beauteous dames be said? Who, from their lover's worth and charm secure? Against long service, I behold, more staid. More motionless, than marble shafts, endure. Then avarice comes. Who so her spells hath laid? I see them stoop directly to her lure. Who could believe, unloving, in a day? They fall some elders, fall some monsters prey. Not without reason here I raise this cry. Read me who can, I read myself, nor so. I from the beaten pathway tread awry. Nor thus the matter of my song forego. Not more to what is shown do I apply. My saying, than to what I have to show. But now return we to the paladine. Who was about to taste the enchanted wine. Fain would he think a while of whom I speak. As said, ere to his lips the vase he bore. He thought. Then thus, when finding what we seek. Displeases, this, tis folly to explore. My wife's a woman, every woman's weak. Then let me hold the faith I held before. Faith still has brought, and yet contentment brings. From proof itself what better profit springs? From this small good, much evil I foresee. For tempting God moves sometimes his disdain. I know not if it wise or foolish be. But to know more than needs, I am not fain. Now put away the enchanted cup from me. I neither will, nor would, the goblet drain. Which is with heaven's command as much at strife. As Adam's deed who robbed the tree of life. For as our sire who tasted of that tree. And God's own word, by eating, disobeyed. Fell into sorrow from felicity. And was by misery evermore o'erlaid. The husband so, that all would know and see. Whatever by his wife is done and said. Passes from happiness to grief and pain. Nor ever can uplift his head again. Meanwhile the good Rinaldo saying so and pushing from himself the cup abhorred, beheld of tears a plenteous fountain flow, from the full eyes of that fair mansion's lord, who cried, now having somewhat calmed his woe, accursed be he, persuaded by whose word. Alas! I of the fortune made a say, whereby my cherished wife was reft away. Wherefore ten years ago wast thou not known? so that I counseled might have been of thee? Before the sorrows and the grief begun, that have nigh quenched my eyes, but raised shall be. 
the curtain from the scene, that thou upon. My pain mayst look, and mayst lament with me. And I to thee of mine unheard of woe. The argument and very head will show. Above, was left a neighboring city, Pent. Within a limpid stream that forms a lake. Which widens, and wherein Pa finds a vent. Their way the waters from Benicus take. Built was the city, when to ruin went. Walls founded by the Agenorian snake.524. Hear me of gentle line my mother bore. But of small means, in humble home and poor. If fortune's care I was not, who denied? To me upon my birth a wealthy boon. Nature that went with graceful form supplied. So that in beauty rival had I none. Enamored of me in youth's early tide. Erewhile was dame and damsel more than one. For I with beauty coupled winning ways. Though it becomes not man himself to praise. A sage within our city dwelled, a white. Beyond belief, in every science great. Who, when he closed his eyes on Phoebus' light. Numbered one hundred years, one score and eight. A savage life he led and out of sight. Until impelled by love. The senior late. By dint of gifts obtained a matron fair. Who secretly to him a daughter bare. And to prevent the child from being won. As was erewhile the mother, that for gain. Bartered her chastity, whose worth alone. Excels what gold earth's ample veins contain. With her he from the ways of man is gone. And where he spies the loneliest place, his train. Of demons' forces, in enchantment skilled. This dome so spacious, fair, and rich, to build. By ancient and chaste dames he there made rear. This daughter, that in sovereign beauty grew. Nor suffered her to see or even hear. A man beside himself. And, for her view. Lest lights should lack, whereby her course to steer. The senior every modest lady, who. Err on unlawful love the barrier shut. Made limb in picture. Or in sculpture cut. Nor he alone those virtuous dames, who, sage. And chaste, had so adorned antiquity. Whose fame, preserved by the historic page. Is never doomed its dying day to see. But those as well that will in future age. Everywhere beautify fair Italy. Made fashion in their well-known form and mien. As eight that round this fount by thee are seen. What time the damsel ripe for husband shows. So that the fruit may now be gathered, I. Did chance or my misfortune so dispose? I am worthiest found. And those broad lands that lie. Without the walls which that fair town enclose. The fishy flat no less than upland dry. Extending twenty miles about that water. He gives me for a dowry, with his daughter. She was so mannered, was so fair of hue. None could desire she other gifts should bring. So well to broider was she taught, and so. Minerva knew not better. Did she sing? Or play, or walk, to those that hear and view? She seems a heavenly, and no mortal thing. And in the liberal arts was skilled as well. As her own sire, or scarce behind him fell. With genius high and beauty no less bright. Which might have served the very stones to move. Such love, such sweetness did the maid unite. Thinking thereof me seems my heart is clove. She had no greater pleasure or delight. Then being with me, did I rest or rove. Twas long ere we had any strife, in fine. We quarreled, and the fault, alas. Was mine. Five years my consort's father had been dead. Since to that yoke I stooped, and pledged my vow. When in short time, the manner shall be said. Began the sorrows that I feel even now. While me with all his pinions overspread. Love of the dame, whose praises thus I blow. A noble townswoman with love of me. Was smit, more sorely smitten none could be. She, in all magic versed, was of such skill. 
as never was enchantress. By her say, moved solid earth, and made the sun stand still. Illumined gloomy night and darkened day. Yet never could she work upon my will. The anguish of her amorous wound to allay. With salve I could not give, except with scathe. Of her to whom erewhile I pledged my faith. Not because she right gentle was and bright. Nor because I believed her love so true. Nor for large gift, nor promise often plight. Nor yet because she never ceased to sue. Could she from me obtain one spark of light? From that first flame my gentle consort blew. So mates and masters every will in me. The knowledge of my wife's fidelity. I in the hope, belief, and certitude. My wife to me was faithful evermore. Should with contempt the beauty have eschewed. Of that famed daughter which fair Lita bore. And all the wit and wealth wherewith was wooed. The illustrious shepherd upon Ida whore. But no repulse withal with her avails. Who me, forever at my side, assails. One day that me beyond my palace sees. That weird enchantress, who Melissa hight. And where she can discourse with me at ease. She finds a way whereby my peace to blight. And, goading me with evil jealousies. The faith I nursed at heart, she puts to flight. She'd gone commending my intent to be. Faithful to her who faithful was to me. But that she faithful is, ye cannot say. Save of her faith ye have assurance true. If she fails not withal, where fail she may. She faithful, modest may be deemed by you. But is she never from your side away? Is not permitted other man to view? How does this boldness come, that you would be? The warrant of her untried modesty? Go forth a while, go forth come from home alone. And be the brute in town and village spread. That she remains behind, and you are gone. Let lovers and let couriers have their head. If, unpersuaded still by prayer and boon. She does no outrage to the marriage bed. Though doing so she deem herself unseen. Then faithful you the dame may justly wean. I with such words and such like words was plied. Till so on me the shrewd enchantress wrought. I wish to see my consort's virtue tried. By certain proof. And to the touchstone brought. Now grant we, I to that which lady cried. She prove what cannot by myself be thought. How by some certain token can I read? If she will merit punishment or mead? A drinking cup will I for that essay. Give you, she said, a virtue strange and rare. Such was for Arthur made by Morg the Fay, 525. To make him of Ginevra's fault aware. The chaste wife's lord thereof may drink, but they. Drink not, whose wedded partners wanton are. For, when they would the cordial beverage sup. Into their bosom overflows the cup. Below departing, you the test shall try. And, to my thinking, now shall you drink clean. For clean as yet I think your consort, I. The event however shall by you be seen. Yet will I warrant not your bosom dry. Should you repeat the proof, for if, between. The cup and lip, the liquor be not shed. You are the happiest wight that ever Wednesday. The offer I accept, the vase to me. Is given, and trial made with full success. For hitherto, as hoped, confirmed I see. My gentle consort's worth and faithfulness. Leave her a while, Melissa said, and be. A month or twain a truant, more or less. Then homeward wend, again the goblet fill. And prove if you the beverage drink or spill. I thought it hard to leave my consort's side. Not as so much about her truth in pain. As that I could nor for two days abide. Nay, not an hour without her could remain. You in another way, Melissa cried. Guided by me, the truth shall ascertain. Voice, vesture shall you change, and to her sight. Present yourself, disguised like other white. Sir, a fair city nigh at hand, defends. 
twixt fierce and threatening horns the foaming Po, whose jurisdiction to the shore extends, where the sea's briny waters come and go. This yields an ancientry, but well contends, with neighboring towns in rich and gorgeous show. A Trojan remnant its foundations placed, which scaped from Attila's destructive waste. 526. A rich, a youthful, and a handsome knight bridles this city with his sovereign sway, who, following a lost falcon in its flight, entering by chance my dwelling on a day, beheld my wife, who pleased him so at sight. He bore her impress in his heart away nor ceased to practice on her, with intent, to incline the matron to his evil bent. So often she repels the cavalier, that finally his courtship is foregone. But her fair image graved by love will ne'er be raised from memory, me Melissa one. So well she soothed and flattered, of that peer, the face and figure to the sight to dawn, and changed me, nor well how can I declare. In voice and visage and in eyes and hair. I, having to my lady made a show. As eastward bound and gone, like him that wooed. Her rich and youthful lover, altered so. His semblance, walk, voice, vest in me are viewed. Homeward, attended by Melissa, go. Into a page upon her side transmute. Who the most costly jewels with her bore. E'er brought form ind or Erythrean shore. I enter safely, that my palace knew. And with me wends Melissa. And there I. So holy at her ease Madonna view. No woman or attendant squire is by. To her with suppliant prayer forth with I sue. And next those goads to evil deed apply. Show emerald, ruby, diamond, that might serve. To make the firmest heart from honor swerve. And I declare to her the gift is small. To that, which she may hope to make her own. Then of the vantage speak, that from his hall. Her husband at the present time is gone. And I how long it was to her recall. Since, as she knew, to her my love was shown. And that my loving with such faith, in the end. Might worthily to some reward pretend. At first she was some deal disturbed, became like scarlet, nor would listen to my say. But seeing those bright jewels flash like flame, her stubborn heart was softened, and gave way. And in brief speech and feeble said the dame, What to remember takes my life away. She with my wishes, said, she would comply. If sure to be unseen of watchful eye. Me my wife's words like poisoned weapon thrill and pierce my suffering spirit through and through. Through bones and veins there went a deadly chill. My tongue clave to my throat, the witch withdrew. With that the magic mantle, and at will. Transformed me to mine ancient shape anew. Bethink thee of what hue my wife became. Taken by me in such notorious shame. Of deadly hue we both of us remain. We both stand silent both with downcast eye. So feeble is my tongue, that I with pain. So faint my voice, that I with pain can cry. Thou wouldst betray me then, O wife, for gain. If there was one that would my honor buy. She not replies, nor save by tears she speaks. Which furrow, as they fall, her woeful cheeks. Shame stings her sore, but yet in sorrow wise. Wrath at the outrage I to her had done. And so without restraint it multiplies. And into rage and cruel hate is run. To fly from me forthwith does she devise. And, what time from his car dismounts the sun. Runs to the shore, aboard her pinnace wends. And all that night the stream in haste descends. And she at morn presents herself before. Him that had loved her once, the cavalier whose semblance and whose borrowed face I wore. When, to my shame, I tempted her Wylera. To him that loved, and loves her evermore. Her coming, it may be believed, is dear. 
From thence she bade me never entertain. The hope she'd love me or be mine again. Alas! With him she swells in mickle glee. Even from that day, and makes of me a jest. And of that evil which I brought on me. I languish yet, and find no place of rest. Justly this growing ill my death will be. Of little remnant now of life posseest. I well believe I in a year had died. But that a single comfort aid supplied. That comfort was. Of all which harbored were. Here for ten years, for still to every guest. Beneath my roof I bade the vessel bear. Was none but with the wine had bathed his breast. To have so many comrades in my care. Some little soothes the griefs that so molest. Thou only of so many hast been wise. Who wouldst forbear the perilous emprise? My wish, o'erpassing every fitting bound. To know what husband of his wife should know. Is cause, by me no quiet will be found. Whether my death be speedy of be slow. Thereat at first Melissa joys, but drowned. Forthwith is her light mirth, for of my woe. Esteeming her the cause, that dame so sore. I hated, I would not behold her more. Impatient to be treated with disdain. By me, of her more loved than life, she said. Were she forthwith as mistress to remain. Had hoped, when thence the other was conveyed. Not to behold such present, cause of pain. Her own departure little she delayed. And went so far away, no further word. By me was ever of that woman heard. His tale the mournful cavalier so taught. And when he now had closed his history. With pity touched, some while immersed in thought. Rinaldo mused, and after made reply. Right ill advice to thee Melissa brought. Who moved three thus to anger wasps. And I. Perceive in thee small wisdom, that wouldst sound. A thing which thou wouldst gladly not have found. If she, thy wife, by avarice was inclined. To break her faith and be to thee untrue. Muse not, nor first nor last of womankind. She, worsted, from such cruel war withdrew. And by a meaner bribe yet firmer mind. Is even tempted fouler deed to do. Of men, of how many we hear, that sold. Their patrons and their friends for sordid gold? With such fierce arms thou ill didst her assail. If to behold a brave defense thou sought. Knowst thou not, against gold of no avail. Is stone, or steel to hardest temper wrought? Meseems that thou in tempting her didst fail. More than herself, that was so quickly caught. I know not, had she tempted thee as much. If thou, thyself, hadst better stood the touch. Here ends Rinaldo, and, the parley done. Rises and to his rest desires to go. A while will he repose, and then be gone. An hour or two before the daylight show. But little time has Amon's warlike son. Nor idly will that little time bestow. To him the mansion's master made reply. He in his house might at his pleasure lie. For bed and bower, within, were ready dight. But, would he take his counsel for his guide? In comfort might he sleep throughout the night. And yet advance some miles. For thou, he cried. Shalt have a pinnace, that with rapid flight. And without risk shall with the current glide. Therein shalt thou all night pursue thy way. And on thy journey gain with all a day. Good seemed that proffer in Rinaldo's eyes. And to the courteous host large thanks he paid. Then for the pinnace which that lord supplies. That waits him with her crew, the warrior maid. Here, at full ease reclined, Rinaldo lies. While with the stream his frigate is conveyed. Which, by six oars impelled, flies fast and fair. And cleaves the water, as a bird the air. As soon as he reclines his weary head. Asleep is Mount Albano's cavalier. Having erewhile, that they shall wake him, said. As soon as they Ferrara's city near. Malara lies left of that river's bed. 
Sermai to the right, they in their rear. Next leave Stellata and Figarolo. Where his two horns are lowered by angry Pa. Of those two horns that which T. Ward Venice goes. Rinaldo's pilot left, and took the right. Then the Bodino passed. Already shows. Faintly the eastern blue, and fades from sight. For now Aurora from her basket throws. All her rich flowers, and paints it red and white. When viewing the two castles of Tildo. Again his head uplifts the good Rinaldo. O oh, happy town! Whereof, the warrior cried. Spake Malagigi, having, far and near. The fixed and wandering fires of heaven espied. And forced some subject spirit to appear. To me foretelling that in future tide. What time with him I took his way Wylera. Even to such pitch thy glorious fame should rise. Thou from all Italy wouldst bear the prize. So saying, in his barge he all this while. Hurries, as if the bark with pinions flew. Scouring the king of rivers, to that isle. Nearest the town. 527 and, though it not to view. Deserted and neglected then, doth smile. This yet rejoices to behold anew. Nor make small mirth thereat. Because aware. Hereafter how adorned, twill be and fair. Before when he with him that way had gone. From Malagigi, his cousin, did he hear. That when seven hundred times his course had run. Circling the heaven in Ares, the fourth sphere. 528. Of islands this should be the fairest one. In sea, or pool, or river, far and near. So that who this beheld, would brook no more. To hear that praised which fair Nausicaa bore. 529. He heard, it in fair mansions would outdo. That island which Tiberius held so dear. And trees that in Hesperian gardens grew. Would yield to what this beauteous place should bear. So rare its race of beasts no fairer shoe. Herded or housed erewhile by Circe were. Venus with loves and graces there should sport. Nor more in Nied and Cyprus keep her court. And so would flourish through his study and care. Who will with knowledge and with power should blend. And who so safely should that bright repair. With circling wall and sheltering dyke defend. The united world's assault it well might dare nor call on foreign power its aid to lend. And that Duke Hercules' sire and Hercules' son 530. Was he by whom this marvel should be done? So when's the warrior summing in his mind? What erst to him had told his cousin wise? What time the sage of future things divined? Whereof with him he often won't devise? And I contemplating that city blind? How can it ever be, Rinaldo cries? that in all liberal and all worthy arts shall flourish so these waste and watery parts, and that to city of such amplitude, and beauty such a petty burg should grow, and where but marsh and miry pool is viewed, henceforth should full and fruitful harvests glow, even now I rise, to hail the gentle blood, the love, the courtesy thy lords shall show. O thou fair city, in succeeding years. Thy burghers' honours and thy cavaliers. The grace ineffable of powers above. Thy prince's wisdom and their love of right. Shall with perpetual peace, perpetual love. Preserve thee in abundance and delight. And a defence from all the fury prove. Of such as hate thee, and unmask their spite. Be thy content thy neighbour's wide annoy rather than thou shouldst envy others' joy. While thus Rinaldo speaks, so swiftly borne. By the quick current flies that nimble y'all. Not to the lure more swiftly makes return. The falcon, hurrying at his lord's recall. Thenceforth the right-hand branch of the right horn. Rinaldo takes, and hid our roof and wall. St. George recedes, recede from that swift boat the turrets of Gabana and of the moat. Montalban's martial lord, as it befell. 
that thought moved thought, which others moved again. In memory chances on the night to dwell. That him at supper late did entertain. That, through this city's cause, the truth to tell. Hath reason evermore to be in pain. And of the magic vessel him bethinks. Which shows his consort's guilt to him that drinks. And him bethinks therewith of what the night. Related, how of all that he had tried. Who of his goblet drank, there was no white. But split the wine he to his lips would guide. Now he repents him, now, tis my delight. Mutters, that I the proof would not abide. Succeeding I should prove but what I thought. And not succeeding, to what pass am brought. This my belief I deem a certainty. And faith could have but small increase in me. So, if I this should by the touchstone try. My present good would little bettered be. But small the evil would not prove. If I. Saw of my Clarice what I would not see. This were a thousand against one to stake. To hazard much where I could nothing take. The knight of Claremont buried in this mood. Who lifted not his visage from the floor. A mariner with much attention viewed. That overright was seated at his oar. And. For he deemed he fully understood. The thought that pressed the cavalier so sore. Made him, well spoken was the man and bold. Wake from his muse, some talk with him to hold. The substance of the talk between the two was that the husband little wit posseist, who, wishing to assay if she was true, had tried his wife by too severe a test. For woman, proof to gold and silver, who, armed but with modesty, defends her breast. This from a thousand falchions will defend. More surely, and through burning fires will wend. The mariner subjoined, Thou saidest well. With gifts so rich he should not her have pressed. For, these assaults, these charges, to repel. Not good alike is every human breast. I know not if of wife thou hast heard tell. For haply not with us the tale may rest. That in the very sin her husband spied. For which she by his sentence should have died. My lord should have remembered, gold and mead. Have upon every hardest matter wrought. But he forgot this truth in time of need. And so upon his head this ruin brought. Ah! Would that he in proof, like me, a deed. Done in this neighboring city had been taught. His country and mine own which lake and fun. Brimming with Mincius prisoned waters, pen. I of Adonio speak, that in a hound. A treasure on the judge's wife conferred. Thereof, replied the paladin, the sound. Hath not o'erpassed the Alps, for never word. Of this neighboring France. Nor in my round. Through far and foreign countries have I heard. So tell, if telling irks not said the peer. What willingly I bound myself to hear. The boatman then, erewhile was of this town. One Anselm, that of worthy lineage, came. A white that spent his youth in flowing gown. Studying his Ulpian, he of honest fame. Beauty, and state assorting with his own. A consort sought. And one of noble name. Nor vainly. In a neighboring city, crowned. With superhuman beauty, one he found. She such fair manners and so graceful shows. She seems all love and beauty. And much more. Perchance than mocketh for her lord's repose. Then well befits the reverend charge he bore. He, wedded, straight in jealousy outgoes. All jealous men that ever were before. Yet she affords not other cause for care but that she is too witty and too fair. In the same city dwelt a cavalier, numbered that old and honored race among, sprung from the haughty lineage, which Wylera, out of the jawbone of a serpent sprung, whence Manto 531 doomed my native walls to rear, descended, and with her a kindred throng. The cavalier, Adonio was he named. 
was with the beauties of the dame inflamed. And for the furtherance of his amorous quest. To grace himself, began his wealth to spend. Without restraint, in banquet and in vest. And what might most a cavalier commend? If he Tiberius 532 treasure had posseist. He of his riches would have made an end. I well believe two winters were not done. Ere his paternal fortune was outrun. The house erewhile, frequented by a horde. Morning and evening, of so many friends. Is solitary. Since no more his board. Beneath the partridge, quail, and pheasant bends. Of that once noble troop upon the Lord. Save beggars, hardly any one attends. Ruined, at length he thinks he will be gone. To other country, where he is unknown. He leaves his native land with this intent. Nor letteth any his departure know. And coasts, in tears and making sad lament. The marshes that about his city go. He his heart's queen, amid his discontent. Meanwhile forgets not, for this second woe. Lo! Him another accident that falls. From sovereign woe to sovereign bliss recalls. He saw a peasant who with heavy stake. Smote mid some sapling trunks on every side. Adonio stopped, and wherefore so he strake. Asked of the rustic, that in answer cried. Within that clump a passing ancient snake. Amid the tangled stems he had espied. A longer serpent and more thick to view. He never saw, nor thought to see anew and that from thence he would not wend his way. Until the reptile he had found and slain. When so Adonio heard the peasant say. He scarce his speech with patience could sustain. I reverence to the serpent won't to pay. The honored ensign of his ancient strain. In memory that their primal race had grown. Erewhile from serpent's teeth by Cadmus sown. And by the churl the offended knight so said. And did withal, he made him quit the emprise. Leaving the hunted serpent neither dead. Nor injured, nor pursued in further wise. Thither, where he believes would least have spread. The story of his woe, Adonio hies. And in discomfort and in sorrow wears. Far from his native land, seven weary years. Neither for distance nor for straitened cheer which will not let thought run its restless round. Ceased love, so want to reign the cavalier. I to inflame his heart. I vex his wound. At length those beauties, to his eyes so dear. Parforce must he revisit, homeward bound. Unshorn, afflicted, he, in poor array. Thither returns, from whence he went his way. My city, at the time whereof I tell. To Rome was fain to send an embassy. That sometime near his holiness should dwell. And for how long a time could none foresee. Upon our judge the lot of envoy fell. O day, that ever wept by him will be. To be excused, and Selmo promised, prayed. And bribed, but at the last par force obeyed. As no less cruel and less hard to abide. He deemed a woe which caused such piteous smart. Then had he seen a hostile hand his side. Lay bare. And from his bosom pluck his heart. Dead white with jealous fear his cheek is dyed. Through doubt of his fair consort while apart. And in the mode he deems may best avail. He supplicates her not in faith to fail. Nor beauty, to his wife the husband cries. Nor noble blood nor fortune. Are enow. To make a woman to true honor rise. Save chaste in name and deed. Subjoining how. The virtue that mankind most highly prize. Is that which triumphs after strife. And now. Through his long absence, a fair field and wide. Is opened where that virtue may be tried. With such persuasions, and with many more. Anselm exhorts the lady to be true. His going doth his woeful wife deplore. O oh heaven, what tears, what loud complaints ensue! Immersed in her despair, 
that lady swore. Sooner the sun bedimmed the world should view. Then she would break her faith, she would expire. Sooner than she would cherish such desire. Though to the lady's promise and protest. He lent belief, and somewhat calmed his fears. Until he further hear he will not rest. Until he can find matter for his tears. A soothsayer he among his friends posseist. Prized for his knowledge, as the first of seers. Who of all witchery and of magic art. Had read the whole, or read the greater part. To him before departing does he pray. To take the charge upon himself to see. If true would be Argia while away. So name his consort, or the contrary. Won by his prayers, he takes the time o' oh, the day. Figures the heavens as they appear to be. And Selmo left him at his work, and came. His answer on the following day to claim. The astrologer is silent, loath to expose. A matter that will work the doctor woe. And would excuse himself with many a glows. But when he sees, he would the evil know. Argia will break faith with him, he shows. As soon as he shall from his threshold go. Nor prayer shall soften her, nor beauty fire. Corrupted will she be by gain and hire. When to Anselmo's early doubt and fear. Are joined the threatenings of the signs above. How stands his heart may well to thee appear. If thou hast known the accidents of love. And worse than every woe, wherewith Wylera. The afflicted spirits of that husband strove. Is that it by the prophet is foretold. Argia's honor will be bought and sold. Now to support his wife, as best he may. From falling into such an evil deed. For man, alas, will sometimes disarray. The altar, when he finds himself in need. What gold and gems the judge had put away. A plenteous store, he leaves. And field and mead. Rents, fruits, and all possessions whatsoever. Leaves to his consort. All his worldly gear. With power, he said, not only without measure. These, as thou needest, to enjoy and spend. But do with them according to thy pleasure. Consume and fling away, and give and vend. Other account I ask not of my treasure. If such as now I find thee in the end. But such as now remain, at thy command. Even shouldst thou squander both, our house and land. Unless she heard he thither made repair. He prayed that she would dwell not in the town. But would a farm of his inhabit, where. She might with all convenience live alone. And this besought he of his consort fair. As thinking, that the rustics, which on down. Pasture their flocks, or fruitful fallows till. Could ne'er contaminate her honest will. Her fearful husband still embracing close. Her arms about his neck Argia threw. A burst of tears her visage overflows. For from her eyes two streams their way pursue. She grieves, he guilty should his wife suppose. As if she hath already been untrue. For his suspicion to its source she traced. That in her faith no faith Anselmo placed. Citing their long farewell, I should exceed. To thee at length, he so the dame addressed. I recommend my honor, and indeed. Took leave, and on his road in earnest pressed. And truly felt, on wheeling round his steed. As if his heart was issuing from his breast. She follows him as long as she can follow. With eyes whose tears her furrowed visage hollow. Poor, pale, unshorn, and wretched, as Wylera. To you in former strain by me was said. Homeward meanwhile the wandering cavalier. Hoping he there should be unknown, had made. Beside the lake that pilgrim journeyed, near. The city, where he gave the serpent aid. In that thick brake besieged by village swain. Who with his staff the reptile would have slain. Arriving here, upon the dawn of light. For yet some stars were glimmering in the skies. Approaching him, in foreign vesture dight. Along the shore, a damsel he espies. 
though neither squire nor waiting wench in sight. Appears, yet noble is the lady's guise. With pleasing visage she Adonio boards. And then breaks silence in the following words. Albeit thou knowst me not, O cavalier. I am thy kin, and greatly bound to thee. I am thy kin, for of the lineage clear. Derived of haughty Cadmus seed are we. I am the fairy Manto, that Wylera. Laid the first stone of this rude villagery. And, as thou haply mayst have heard it famed. Mantua from me the rising town was named. Oh, the fairies am I one, with that to show. Our fatal state, and what it doth import. We to all other kinds of ill below. Are subject by our natal influence, short. Of death. But with a mortal being such woe. Is coupled, death is not of direr sort. For every seventh day we all must take. By certain law, the form of spotted snake. So sad it is that loathsome coil to fill. And prone, at length, upon the ground to crawl. Equal to this here is no worldly ill. So that immortal life is cursed by all. And thou the debt I owe thee, for my will. Is to inform thee of its cause withal. Shalt know as well, how on that fatal day. Of change we are to countless ills a prey. So hated as the serpent beast is none. And we that wear its evil form, alarm. Outrage, and war endure from every one. For all that see us, hunt and do us harm. Unless we can to ground for shelter run. We feel how heavy falls man's furious arm. Happier it were to die, than languish, broke. Battered, and crippled by the cruel stroke. My mighty obligation due to thee. Is that, when once thou didst this green wood thread. Thou from a rustic's fury rescued'st me. By whose ill handling was I sore bested. But for thine aid, should not have got free. Without a broken spine or battered head. With body crooked and crushed I should have lain. Albeit I could not by his arm be slain. Because thou hast to know upon the day. We sprang from earth with scales of dragon dight. Subject to us at other times, to obey. The heavens refuse. And we are void of might. At other seasons, at our simple say. The circling sun stands still, and dims its light. Fixed earth is moved. And in a circle wheels. Ice at our word takes fire, and fire congeals. Now here, prepared to render thee the mead. Of benefit then done to me, I stand. For now, dismantled of my dragon weed. Vainly no grace of me wilt thou demand. Even now, thrice richer art thou by my deed. Than when thou erdst ere while thy father's land. Now will I that henceforth thou shalt be poor. But wealth, the more, tis spent, augment the more. And because with that ancient knot thou still. I know, art tangled, which by love was tied. The mode and order. How thou mayst fulfill. Thy wishes, shall by me be signified. Now that her lord is absent, tis my will. My scheme without delay by thee be tried. Go forth the lady at her farm to find. Without the town, nor will I say behind. She her discourse continuing, gone advise. What form he to that lady's eyes should take. I say, what vesture wear, and in what wise. Should speak, how tempt her. What entreaties make. And said, how she her figure would disguise. For, save the day wherein she was a snake. Upon all others went the fairy drayest. In whatsoever figure pleased her best. She in a pilgrim's habit clothed the night. Such as from door to door our alms entreat. Into a dog she changed herself to sight. The smallest ever seen, of aspect sweet. Long hair, then ermine's fur more snowy white. And skilled withal in many a wondrous feat. Towards Argia's villa, so transmute. The fairy and the knight their way pursued. And at the laborer's cabins in his round. The stripling halts, 
before he stops elsewhere. And certain rustic reeds begins to sound. His dog is up, and dances to the air. The dame, that hears the voice and cry rebound, is by the rumor moved to see the pair. Into her court she has the pilgrim brought, as Anselm's evil destiny had wrought. And here Adonio gives the dog command. And here by that obedient dog is shown. Dance of our country and of foreign land. With paces, graces, fashions of his own. And finally he does, amid that band. With winning ways what else is to be done. With such attention of the admiring crew. None winked their eyes, their breath they scarcely drew. Great marvel in the dame, then longing, bred. That gentle dog, she won that her had nursed. With no mean offer to his master sped. If all the riches for which women thirst. To her ambassadress in answer said. The wary pilgrim, in my bags were pursed. There is not in that treasure what would boot. To purchase of my dog one single foot. And he, the truth of his discourse to show. Into a corner took the beldam old. And bade the dog in courtesy bestow. Upon that messenger a mark of gold. The dog obeyed, and shook himself, and lo! The treasure. Which he bade her have and hold. Thereto he added, Thinkest thou by aught? A dog so fair and useful can be bought? For whatsoever I of him demand. I empty handed never go away. Now pearl, now ring will he shake from him, and. Now gift me with some rich and fair array. Yet tell Madonna he is at her command. But not for gold, for him no gold can pay. But if I for one night her arms may fill. Him may she take and do with him her will. So said, a gem, new dropped, on her he pressed. And bade her to the lady bear the boon. That in the costly produce she posseest. Ten, twenty ducats value deemed the crone. She bore the message to the dame addressed. And after wrought on her till she was won. To buy the beauteous dog, who might be bought. By payment of a prize which costeth not. Argia somewhat coy at first appears. Partly that she her faith will not forego. Partly that she believes not all she hears. That beldam of the dog and pilgrim show. The nurse insists, and dins into her ears. That seldom such a chance occurs below. And makes her fix another day to see. That dog, when fewer eyes on her shall be. The next appearance which Adonio made. Was ruined to the doctor, for the hound. Doubloons, by dozens, and by dozens, braid. Of pearl, and costly jewels scattered round. So that Argia's pride of heart was laid. And so much less the dame maintained her ground. When she in him, who made the proffer, viewed. The Montuan cavalier that whilom wooed. The harlot nurse's evil oratory. The prayer and presence of the suitor lord. The occasion to acquire that mighty fee. Which wretched Anselm's absence would afford. The hope that none would her accuser be. So vanquish her chaste thoughts, she makes the accord. Accepts the wondrous dog. And, as his pay. To her leman yields herself a willing prey. The fruits of love long culled that cavalier. With his lady fair. Unto whom the fay. Took such affection, whom she held so dear. That she obliged herself with her to stay. Through all the signs the sun had travelled, ere. The judge had leave to wend his homeward way. He finally returned, but sore afraid. Through what the astrologer erewhile had said. Arrived, his first employment is to run. To that astrologer's abode, and crave. If shame and evil to his wife be done. Of if she yet her faith and honor save. The heavens he figured, and to every one. Of the seven planets its due station gave. Then to the judge replied that it had been. Even as he feared, and as it was foreseen. By richest presence tempted to forego. Her faith, a prey was she to other white. 
This to the doctor's heart was such a blow. Nor lance, nor spear, I deem, so sorely smite. To be more certified he wends, although. He is too well assured the seer is right. To that old nurse, and, drawing her apart. To learn the truth employs his every art. He in wide circles doth about her wind. Hoping now here, now there, to spy some trace. But not in the beginning can he find. With whatsoever care he sifts the case. For she, as not unpractised in that kind, denies, and fronts him with untroubled face. And, as well taught, above a month stands out. Holding the judge, twixt certainty and doubt. How blessed would doubt appear, had he that wound. Foreseen, which would be given by certainty. When out of that false nurse at last he found. He could not fish the truth by prayer or fee. Touching no cord but yielded a false sound. He shrewdly waits his time till there should be. Discord between the beldam and his wife. For where so women are, is stir and strife. And even that Anselmo waited, so. Befell, since, angered by the first despite. Unsought of him, to him that nurse did go. To tell the whole, and nothing hid from sight. How sank his heart beneath that cruel blow. Twere long to say, how prostrate lay his sprite. So was the wretched judge with grief oppressed. He of his wits well nigh was dispossessed. And finally resolved to die, so burned. His rage, but first would kill the faithless dame. And he with one destructive falchion yearned. To free himself from woe and her from shame. Stung by such blind and furious thoughts, returned. Anselmo to the city, in a flame. And to the farm dispatched a follower true. Charged with the bidding he was bound to do. He bids the servant to the villa go. And to Argia in his name pretend. He by a fever is reduced so low. She hardly can arrive before his end. Hence without waiting escort, would she show. Her love, she with his man must backward wend. Wend with him will she surely, nor delay. And bids him cut her throat upon the way. The serving man to call his lady went. Prepared his lord's command on her to do. Having her little dog at starting hent. She mounted and began her journey, through. The dog advised of Anselm's ill intent. But bid no less her purpose to pursue. For he had taken thought for her, and aid. Should in the time of peril be purveyed. The servant from his pathway turns aside. And through by roads and solitary goes. Purposely lighting on a stream, whose tide. From Apennine into our river flows. Where, both of farm and busy city wide. A holt, and dark and dismal green wood grows. Silent appeared the gloomy place, and one. Fitting the cruel deed which should be done. He drew his sword on her, and signified. The mandate by her angry husband given. That so she might entreat, before she died. Forgiveness of her every sin from heaven. I know not how. She vanished from his side. When through her flank the blade he would have driven. Vainly long time he seeks her, then remains. Foiled and outscorned, for guerdon of his pains. He all astound and with bewildered face. And full of shame, to seek his lord returns. Who from the servant that unwanted case. Unweeding how the thing had happened, learns. Nor knows the fairy manto fills a place. About Argia, prompt to serve her turns. Because the nurse, that all the rest revealed. I know not wherefore, I, had this concealed. He knows not what to do, the outrage sore. Avenged he has not, nor his pain all aid. What was a moat is now a beam, so sore. It pressed him, on his heart so heavy weighed. So plain is what was little known before. He fears that it will shortly be displad. At first, he haply might have hid his woe. Which rumor now throughout the world will blow. Full well he wots, that since his evil vein. 
he to his wife, unhappy wretch, hath shown not to be subject to his yoke again. She to some strong protector will have flown, who to his ignominy will maintain and utter scorn, the lady as his own. And haply may she to some lozel flee. Who will her paramour and pander be? For remedy. He sends in haste a band. Of messengers, with letters far and nigh. Some of Argia here, some their demand. Nor town unsearched is left in Lombardy. Next he in person goes. Nor any land. Leaves unexamined by himself or spy. Yet cannot he discover means or way. For learning where concealed his consort lay. The servant last he called on whom was laid. The ill hest, but who had served not his despite. And thither by his guidance was conveyed. Where, as, twas said, she vanished from his sight. Who haply lurked by day in greenwood shade and to some friendly roof retired at night. He thither guided, where but forest trees. He thinks to find, a sumptuous palace sees. This while for bright Argia in that part. The fay had made with speedy toil prepare. An alabaster palace by her art. Gilded within, without, and everywhere. So wonderful, no tongue could tell, no heart. Conceive, how rich within, without how fair. That, which thou deemed so fair, my master's home, is but a cottage to that costly dome. Curtain and cloth of arras deck the wall, sumptuously woven and in different wise. In vaulted cellar and in littered stall, not only spread in latticed galleries, not only spread in lordly bower and hall. Vase, gold and silver, gems of many dyes. Carved into cup and charger, blue, red, green. And countless cloths of silk and gold are seen. He chanced upon the costly dome, as I. To you was in my story making known. When he expected not a hut to spy. And but a weary waste of woodland lone. As he beheld the dome with wondering eye. And Selmo thought his intellects were gone. That he was drunk, or dreamed that wondrous sight. He weaned, of that his wits had taken flight. An Ethiop woman posted at the door. With blubber lip and nostril, he descries. Nor will he see again, nor e'er before. Had seen a visage of such loathsome guise. Ill-favored, such was Aesop feigned of yore. If there, she would have saddened paradise. Greasy and foul and beggarly her vest. Nor half her hideousness have I expressed. Anselm, who saw no other white beside. To tell who was that mansion's lord, drew nigh. To the Ethiopian, and to her applied. And she, the owner of this house am I. The judge was well assured the negress lied. And made that answer but in mockery. But with repeated oaths the negress swears. Tis hers, and none with her the mansion's shares. And would he see the palace, him invites to view it at his ease, and recommends, if there be aught within which him delights, to take it for himself or for his friends. And Selmo hears, and from his horse alights, gives it his man, and o'er the threshold wends, and by the hag conducted, mounts from hall, below to bower above, admiring all. Form, sight, and sumptuous work doth he behold and royal ornament and fair device. And oft repeats, not all this wide world's gold. To buy the egregious mansion wound suffice. To him in answer said that negress old. And yet this dome, like others, hath its price. If not in gold and silver, price less high. Then gold and silver will the palace buy. And she to him prefers the same request which erst Adonio to Argia made. A fool he deemed the woman and posseist, who for a boon so foul and filthy prayed. Yet ceased she not, though more than thrice repressed, and strove so well Anselmo to persuade, proffering, for his reward, the palace still. 
she wrought on him to do her evil will. The wife Argia, that is hid fast by. When in such sin her husband she descries. Springs forth and saith, Ah! Worthy deed! Which I! Of doctor, that was deemed so passing wise. Found in such foul and filthy work, espy. Bethink thee, if his kindling blushes rise. If he stands mute. Why opens not thy hollow? And central womb, O earth, the wretch to swallow? To clear herself and shame him, doth she stun. And Selmo, never ceasing to upbraid. What pain should by thyself be undergone? For this so filthy deed, Argia said. If thou wouldst take my life for having done. What nature prompted and a lover prayed? One that was fair and gentle, and who brought? A gift, compared wherewith, this dome is not? If worthy of one death thou deemest me, worthy art thou a hundred deaths to die. And, though my pleasure might I do on thee, so passing puissant in this place am I. No other or worse vengeance done shall be. Upon my side, on thy delinquency. The give against the take, O husband, place. And, as, twas granted thee, so grant me grace. And be there peace between us, and accord. That all be to forgetfulness consigned. Nor the eye of thy fault by deed or word. Nor me of mine, henceforward thou remind. This seemed a goodly bargain to her lord. Nor to such pardon was he disinclined. Thus peace and concord they at home restore. And love each other dearly evermore. So said the mariner, and some brief fit. Of laughter in Montalban's master stirred. And made his visage burn, as if, twas lit. With fire, when of Anselmo's shame he heard. Rinaldo greatly praised Argia's wit. Who by such quaint device had trapped that bird? Who fell into the net wherein the dame? Herself erewhile had fallen, but with less shame. When the sun climbed a steeper road, the knight ordered the board with food to be supplied, which the good Montuan landlord overnight took care with largest plenty to provide, while the fair town, upon the left, from sight, retired, and on the right that marish wide. Argenta is come and gone, with circling walls. And stream into whose bed Santerno falls. 533. Then was not fair Bastia built, deem I. Which little cause of boast affords to Spain. That there her banner has been raised on high. And causes deeper sorrow to Romain. Thence in straight line their bark, that seems to fly. To the right shore the boatmen drive amain. Next through a stagnant channel make, that near. Ravenna brings by noon the cavalier. 534. Though oft of money he had small supply. Then was the knight so well bested, he made. The weary rowers, in his courtesy. A parting present, ere farewell was said. Here changing horse and guide, to Rimini. Rinaldo rode that very eve, nor stayed in Montefiore till the night was done. And well nigh reached Urbino with the sun. Then Frederick was not there of gentle lore. Nor was Elizabeth nor Guido good. Francis Maria nor sage Leonor. Who would in courteous, not in haughty mood. Have forced so famed a paladin for more. Then one short eye, with them to make abode. As they long did, and do unto this day by dames and cavaliers who pass that way. Since here none takes his reign, Rinaldo bends. His course an end to Cagli. O'er the height. Rift by Gaurus and Matoris, wends. Past Apennine, no longer on his right. Umbrai and Tuscans, and at Rome descends. From Rome to Ostia goes Montalban's knight. Thence to the city sails, where in a grave. His pious son to old Anchises gave. Their changes back. And thence in haste he goes. Bound towards Lampedusa's island shore. That place of combat chosen by the foes. 
and where they had encountered Frank and more. Rinaldo grants his boatmen no repose. That do what can be done by sail and oar. But with ill wind and strong the warrior strives. And, though by little, there too late arrives. Thither he came what time on Glanty's pier. The useful and the glorious deed had done. Had slain those Paynim kings in the career. But had a hard and bloody conquest won. Dead was Sir Brandimart. And Olivier. Dangerously hurt and sore, sate woebegone. Some deal apart, upon the sandy ground. Martyred and crippled by his cruel wound. From tears could not the mournful count refrain. When brave Rinaldo he embraced, and said. How in the battle Brandimart was slain. Such love, such faith endeared the warrior dead. Nor less Rinaldo's tears his visage stain. When he so cleft beholds their comrade's head. Thence to embrace bold Oliviero, where. He sits with wounded foot, he makes repair. All comfort that he could he gave, though none. Could good Rinaldo to himself afford. Because he came but when the feast was done. Yea after the removal of the board. The servants went to the demolished town. There hide the bones of either Paynim lord. Beneath by Serta's ruined domes, and nigh. And far, the fearful tidings certify. At the fair conquest won by Roland's blade. Sansonet and Astolfo make great cheer. Yet other mirth those warriors would have made. Had Brandimart not perished. When they hear. That he is dead, their joy is so allayed. They can no more the troubled visage clear. Which of them now the tidings of such woe? To the unhappy Flordalus shall show? The night preceding that ill omen day. Flordalus dreamed the vest of sable grain. That she had made, her husband to array. And woven with her hand and worked with pain. Before her eyes all sprinkled over lay. With ruddy drops, in guise of pattering rain. That she had worked it so the lady thought. And then was grieved at seeing what was wrought. And seemed to say, Yet from my lord have I. Command to make it all of sable hue. Now wherefore it is stained with other dye. Against his will, in mode so strange to view. She from that dream draws evil augury. And thither on that eve the tidings flew. But these concealed Astolfo from the dame. Till he to her with Sansonetto came. When they are entered, and she sees no show. Of joyful triumphs, she, without a word. Without a hint to indicate that woe. Knows that no longer living is her lord. With that her gentle heart was riven so. And so her harassed eyes the light abhorred. And so was every other sense astound. That, like one dead, she sank upon the ground. She in her hair, when life returns again. Fastens her hand, and on her lovely cheeks. Repeating the beloved name in vain. With all her force her scorn and fury reeks. Uproots and tears, her locks, and in her pain. Like woman, smit by evil demon, shrieks. Or, as Bacanti at the horn's rude sound. Erewhile was seen to run her restless round. Now to the one, to the other now her prayer. She made for knife, wherewith her heart to smite. Now she aboard the pinnace would repair. That brought the course of either Paynim knight. And would on either, lifeless as they were. Do cruel scathe, and vent her fierce despite. Now would she seek her lord, till at his side. She rested from her weary search, and died. Ah! Wherefore, Brandimart, did I let thee? Without me wend on such a dire emprise? She ne'er before did thy departure see. But Flordalus I followed thee, she cries. Well aided mightest thou have been by me. For I on thee should still have kept my eyes. And when Gradasso came behind thee, I. Thee might have succored with a single cry. And haply I so nimbly might have made. Between you, that the stroke I might have caught. And with my head, as with a buckler, stayed. 
for little ill my dying would have wrought. Anyhow I shall die, and, that debt paid. My melancholy death will profit not. When, had I died, defending thee in strife, I could not better have bestowed my life. Even as a verse had been hard destiny. And all heaven's host, when thee I sought to aid. At least my tears had bathed thy visage, I. Should the last kiss thereon, at least, have laid. And, ere amid the blessed hierarchy. Thy spirit mixed, depart, I should have said. In peace, and wait me in thy rest, for there. Where'er thou art, I swiftly shall repair. Is this, O Brandimart, is this the reign? Whose honoured sceptre thou wast now to take? With thee to Domagire, thy fair domain. Thus went I, me thus welcome dost thou make? Alas! What hope today thou renderest vain? Ah! What designs, fell fortune, dost thou break? Ah! Wherefore fear I, since a lot so blessed is lost, to lose as well the worthless rest? Repeating this and other plaint, so spite and fury waxed, that she in her despair made new assault upon her tresses bright, as if the fault was wholly in her hair. Wildly her hands together doth she smite and gnaw, with nails her lip and bosom tear. But I return to Roland and his peers while she bemoans herself and melts in tears. Roland with Olivier, who much requires such leeches care, his anguish to allay, and who, himself, some worthy place desires, as much, wherein Sir Brandimart to lay, steers for the lofty mountain, that with fires brightens the night, with smoke obscures the day. The wind blows fair, and on the starboard hand, not widely distant from them, lies that land. With a fresh wind, that in their favor blows. They loose their hawser at the close of day. In heaven above the silent goddess shows. Her shining horn, to guide them on their way. And on the following morn before them rose. The pleasant shores that round Gurgenti lay. Here Roland orders for the ensuing night. All that is needful for the funeral rite. He, when he saw his order duly done. And now the westering sun's fair light was spent. With many nobles, who from neighboring town. At his invital, to Gurgenti went. The shore with torches blazing up and down. And sounding wide with cries and loud lament. Thither returned where late, of life bereft. His friends, beloved in life and death. Was left. There stands Bardino, weeping o'er the bier. Who under age's heavy burden bows. Who, in the tears on shipboard shed Wylera. Might well have wept away his eyes and brows. Upbraiding skies and stars, the cavalier. Like lion, in whose veins a fever glows. Roars as he wreathes his wayward hands within. His hoary hair, and rends his wrinkled skin. Upon the paladins return the cry. Redoubled, and the morning louder grew. Orlando to the course approached more nigh. And speechless stood a while, his friends to view. Pale, as at eve is the acanthus dye. Or lilies. Which were plucked at morn, he drew. A heavy sigh, and on the warrior dead. Fixing his steadfast eyes, the county said. O comrade bold and true, they're here least slain. And who dost live in heaven above, I know. Rewarded with a life, thy glorious gain. Which neither heat nor cold can take, my woe. Forgive. If thou beholdest me complain. Because I sorrow to remain below. And not to share in such delights with thee. Not that thou art not left behind with me. Alone, without thee, there is not I may. Ever possess, without thee, that can please. If still with thee in tempest and affray. Ah wherefore not with thee in calm and ease? Right sore must be my trespass, since this clay. Will not to follow thee my soul release. If in thy troubles still I bore a burden. 
why am I not a partner of thy guerdon? Thine is the guerdon, mine the loss, thy gain. Is single. But not single is my woe. Partners with me in sorrow are Almain. And grieving France and Italy, and oh! How will my lord and uncle, Charlemagne? How will his paladins lament the blow? How will the Christian church and empire moan? Whose best defense in thee is overthrown? Oh! How thy foes will by the death of thee! Be freed henceforward from alarm and fear! Alas! How strengthened Painimri will be! What hardiment will now be theirs? What cheer! What of thy consort will become? I see! Even hear her mourning, and her outcries here. Me she accuses, haply hates, I know. In that, through me, her every hope lies low. Yet by one comfort, Flordalus, is followed. His loss, for us that reft of him remain. His death, with such surpassing glory hallowed. To die all living warriors should be fain. Those Decii, Curtius, in Rome's forum swallowed. Cordus, so vaunted by the Grecian train. Not with more honor to themselves, with more. Profit to others, went to death of yore. These sad laments and more Orlando made. And all this while white friars, and black, and gray. With other clerks, by two and two arrayed. Behind in long procession took their way. And they to God for the departed prayed. That he would to his rest his soul convey. Before and all about were torches reared. And changed to day the sable knight appeared. They raised the warrior's bier, and ranged to bear. By turns that honored weight were earl and knight. The pall was purple silk, with broidery rare. Of gold, and pearls in costly circles dight. Thereon, of lordly work and no less fair. Cushions were laid, with jewels shining bright. On which was stretched the lifeless knight in view. Arrayed in vest of like device and hue. A hundred men had passed before the rest. All taken from the poorest of the town. And in one fashion equally were drayest. Those beadsmen all, in black and trailing gown. A hundred pages followed them, who pressed. A hundred puissant steeds, for warfare bound. And by those pages backed, the portly steeds. Went, sweeping wide the ground with sable weeds. Banners in front and banners borne in rear. Whose fields with diverse ensignory is stained. Unfurled a company the funeral bier. Which from a thousand vanquished bands were gained. For Caesar and for Peter's church Wylera. By that rare force, which now extinct remained. Bucklers by other followers carried are. One from good warriors, whose device they bear. By hundreds and by hundreds followed more. Ordained for different tasks, the steps of those. Who burning torches like those others bore. Mantled, say rather closely muffled, goes. Roland in sables next, and evermore. His eyes suffused and red with weeping shows. Nor wears a gladder face Montalban's peer. At home his wound detained Sir Olivier. The ceremonies would be long to say. In verse, wherewith Sir Brandimart was mourned. The mantles, black or purple, given away. The many torches which that eve were burned. Wending to the cathedral, where the array. Passed on its road, were no dry eyes discerned. All sexes, ages, ranks, in pitying mood. Gazed upon him so youthful, fair, and good. He in the church was placed. And, when with vain. Lament the women had bemoaned the dead. And Kyrie Eleison, by the priestly train. And other holy orisons were said. In a fair ark, upraised on columns twain. Was reared, with sumptuous cloth of gold o'erspread. So willed Orlando, till he could be laid. In sepulchre of costlier matter made. Nor out of Sicily the count departs. Till porphyries he procures and alabasters. And fair designs. And in their several arts. 
has with large hire engaged the primest masters. Next Flordalus, arriving in those parts, raises the quarried slabs and rich pilasters. Who, good Orlando being gone before, is hither wafted from the Afric shore. She, seeing that her tears unceasing flow, and that of long lament she never tires, nor she, for mass or service said, her woe, can ease, or satisfy her sad desires. Vows in her heart she thence will never go, till from the wearied course her soul expires, and builds in that fair sepulchre a cell. There shuts herself, therein for life will dwell thither in person, having courier sent. And letter, Roland goes, her thence to take. Her, would she went to France, with goodly rent. Would gift, and Galerana's inmate make. As far as Liza convoy her, if bent. On journeying to her father. For her sake. If holy she to serve her God was willed. A monastery would the warrior build. Still in that sepulchre she dwelt, and worn. By weary penance, praying night and day. It was not long. Ere by the Parsi shorn. Was her life's thread, already on their way. Were the three Christian warriors, homeward born. From the isle in whose old caves the Cyclops lay. Sorrowing and afflicted sore in mind. For their fourth comrade who remained behind. They would not go without a leech, whose skill might ease the wound of warlike Olivier, which, as in the beginning it could ill be salved, is hard to heal. Meanwhile they hear the champion so complain, his outcries fill Orlando and all that company with fear. While they discoursed thereon, the skipper, moved by a new notion, said what all approved. A hermit not far distance hence, he said. A lonely rock inhabits in this sea. Whose isle none, seeking succor, vainly tread. Whether for counsel or for aid it be. Who hath done superhuman deeds, the dead. Restores to life, and makes the blind to see. Hushes the winds, and with a sign o oh, the cross. Lulls the loud billows when they highest toss and adds they need not doubt, if they will go, to seek that holy man to God so dear. But he on Olivier will health bestow, having his virtue proved by signs more clear. This counsel pleases good Orlando so, that for the holy place he bids him steer, who never swerving from his course, espies, the lonely rock, upon Aurora's rise. Worked by good mariners, the bark was laid safely beside the rugged rock and fell. The Marquis there, with crew and servants' aid, they lowered into their boat, and through the swell, and foaming waters in that shallop made, for the rude isle, then sought the holy cell, the holy cell of that same hermit whore, by whom Rogero was baptized before, the servant of the Lord of Paradise, receives Orlando and the rest on land blesses the company in cheerful wise, and after of their errand makes demand, though he already had received advice, from angels of the coming of that band, that they were thither bound in search of aid. For Oliviero's hurt, Orlando said, who, warring for the Christian faith, in fight, to perilous pass was brought by evil wound. All dismal fear relieved that Aramite, and promised he would make him wholly sound. In that no unguents hath the holy white. Nor is in other human medicine found. His church he seeks, his knee to Jesus bows. And issues from the fane with cheerful brows. And in the name of those eternal three. The Father, and the Son, and Holy Ghost. On Oliviero bade his blessing be. Oh! Grace vouchsafe to faith his sainted host. From every pain the paladin did free. And to his foot restored its vigor lost. He moved more nimble than before, and sure. And present was Sabrino at the cure. Sabrino, so diseased that he described. 
how worse with each succeeding day he grew. As soon as he that holy monk espied, the manifest and mighty marvel do, disposed himself to cast Mahound aside, and own in Christ a living God and true. He, full of faith, with contrite heart demands our holy rite of baptism at his hands. So him baptized the hermit, and as well. That monarch made as vigorous as Wylera. At this conversion no less gladness fell on Roland and each Christian cavalier. Then when, restored from deadly wound, and well, the friendly troop beheld Sir Olivier. Roger O'More rejoiced than all that crew, and still in faith and grace the warrior grew. Roger O from the day he swam ashore. Upon that islet, there had ever been. That band is counseled by the hermit whore. Who stands, benign, those warlike knights between. Eschewing in their passage mire and more. To wade with all through that dead water. Clean. Which men call life. Wherein so fools delight. And evermore on heaven to fix their sight. Roland on shipboard sends one from his throng. Who fetches hence good wine, hams, cheese, and bread. And makes the sage, who had forgotten long. All taste of partridge since on fruits he fed. Even do for love, what others did, among. Those social guests for whom the board was spread. They, when their strength by food was reinforced. Of many things amid themselves discoursed. And as in talk it often doth befall. That one thing from another takes its rise. Roland and Olivier Rogero call. To mind for that Rogero, in such wise. Renowned in arms. Whose valor is of all. Lauded and echoed with accordant cries. Not even had Rinaldo known the knight. For him whose prowess he had proved in fight. Him well Sabrino recognized Wylera as soon as with that aged man espied. But he at first kept silence, for in fear. Of some mistake the monarch's tongue was tied. But when those others knew the cavalier. For that Rogero, famous far and wide. Whose courtesy, whose might and daring threw. The universal world loud rumor blew. All. For they know he is a Christian, stand about him with serene and joyful face. All press upon the knight. One grasps his hand. Another locks him fast in his embrace. Yet more than all the others of that band. Him would Montalban's lord caress and grace. Why more than all the others will appear. In other strain. If you that strain will hear. Canto. Chapter 44. Rinaldo his sister to the child hath plight. And to Marseilles is with the warrior gone. And having crimsoned wide the field in fight. Therein arrives King Otho's valiant son. To Paris thence, where to that squadron bright. Is mighty grace and wondrous honor done. The child departs, resolved on Leo's slaughter. To whom Duke Amon had betrothed his daughter. In poor abode, mid paltry walls and bare. Amid discomforts and calamities. Often in friendship heart united are. Better than under roof of lordly guise. Or in some royal court, beset with snare. Mid envious wealth, and ease, and luxuries. Where charity is spent on every side. Nor friendship, unless counterfeit, is spied. Hence it ensues that peace and pact between. Princes and peers are of such short-lived wear. Today king, pope, and emperor leagued are seen. And on the marrow deadly foemen are. Because such is not as their outward mean. The heart, the spirit, that those sovereigns bear. Since, wholly careless as to right or wrong. But to their profit look the faithless throng. Though little prone to friendship is that sort. Because with those she loveth not to dwell. Who, be their talk in earnest or in sport. Speak not, except some cousining tale to tell. Yet if together in some poor resort. They prisoned are by fortune false and fell. 
what friendship is they speedily discern. Though years had passed, and this was yet to learn. In his retreat that ancient Aramite could bind his inmates with a faster noose, and in true love more firmly them unite, than other could in domes where courtiers use. And so enduring was the knot and tight, that nothing short of death the tie could loose. Benignant all the hermit found that crew, whiter at heart than swans in outward hue. All kind he found them, and of courteous lore, untainted with iniquity, in wise. Of them I painted, and who never more. Go forth, unless concealed in some disguise. Of injuries among them done before. All memory, by those comrades buried lies. Nor could they better love, if from one womb. And from one seed that warlike band had come. Rinaldo more than all that lordly train. Rogero graced and lovingly caressed. As well because be on the listed plain had proved the peer so strong in martial jest, as that he was more courteous and humane, than any knight that e'er laid lance in rest. But much more, that to him on many a ground, by mighty obligation was he bound, the fearful risk by Richardetto run. He knew, and how Rogero him bested, what time the Spanish monarch's hest was done, and with his daughter he was seized in bed and how he had delivered either son. Of good Duke Buovo, as erewhile was said. From Bertology of Maganza's hand. His evil followers, and the Paynim band. To honor and to hold Rogero dear. Him, Sir Rinaldo thought, this debt constrained. And that he could not so have done Wylera. The warlike lord was sorely grieved and pained. When one for Afric's monarch couched the spear and won the cause of royal Charles maintained. Now he Rogero for a Christian knew. What could not then be done he now would do. Welcome, with endless proffers, on his side. And honor he to good Rogero paid. The prudent sire that in such kindness spied. An opening made for more, the pass essayed. And nothing else remains, that hermit cried. Nor will, I trust. My counsel be gainsaid. But that, conjoined by friendship, you shall be. Yet faster coupled by affinity. That from the two bright progenies, which none. Will equal in illustrious blood below. A race may spring, that brighter than the sun. Will shine, wherever that bright sun may glow. And which, when years and ages will have run. Their course, will yet endure and fairer show while in their orbits burn the heavenly fires. So me, for your instruction, God inspires. And his discourse pursuing still, the seer. So spake, he moves Rinaldo by his reed. To give his sister to the cavalier. Albeit with either small entreaties need. Together with Orlando, Olivier. The council lauds, and would that union speed. King Charles and Amon will, he hopes, approve. And France will welcome wide their wedded love. So spake together Peer and Paladine. Nor knew that Amon, with King Charles's consent, unto the Grecian Emperor Constantine, to give his gentle daughter had intent. Who for young Leo, of his lofty line, the heir and hope, to crave the maid had sent. Such warmth the praises of her worth inspired. With love of her unseen was Leo fired. To him hath Amon answered, he, alone. Cannot conclude thereon in other sort. Until he first hath spoken with his son. Rinaldo, absent then from Charles's court. Who with winged haste, he deems, will thither run. And joy in kinsmen of such high report. But from the high regard he bears his heir. Cannot resolve till thither he repair. Now good Rinaldo, of his father wide, and of the imperial practice knowing not, promised his beauteous sister as a bride, upon his own, as well as Roland's thought, and the others, harbored in that cell beside. 
but most of all on him the hermit wrought. And by such marriage, t'was the peer's belief. He could not choose but pleasure Claremont's chief. That day and night, and of the following day. Great part, with that sage monk the warriors spent. Scarce mindful that the crew their coming stay. Albeit the wind blew fair for their intent. But these, impatient at their long delay. More than one message to the warriors sent. And to return those barons urged so sore. Parforce they parted from the hermit whore. The child who, so long banished, had not stayed. From the lone rock, whereon the waters roared. His farewell to that holy master maid. Who taught him the true faith, anew with sword. Orlando girt his side, and with the blade. Frontino and Marshal Hector's arms restored. As knowing horse and arms were his wylera. As well as out of kindness to the peer. And, though the enchanted sword with better right. Would have been worn by good Anglante's chief. Who from the fearful garden by his might. Had won the blade 535 with mickle toil and grief. Then by Rogero, who that falchion bright. Received with good Frontino, from the thief. He willingly thereof, as with the rest. As soon as asked, the warrior repossessed. The hermit blessings on the band implores. They to their bark in fine return, their sails. Give to the winds, and to the waves their oars. And such clear skies they have and gentle gales. Nor vow nor prayer the patron makes, and moors. His pinnace in the haven of Marseilles. There, safely harbored, let the chiefs remain. Till I conduct Estolfo to that train. When of that bloody, dear brought victory. The scarcely joyful tale Estolfo knew. He, seeing ever more fair France would be. Secure from mischief from the Moorish crew. Homeward to send the king of Ethiopy. Devised, together with his army, through. The sandy desert, by the selfsame track. Through which he led them to Bicerta's sack. Erewhile restored, in Afric waters ride. Sir Duden's ships which did the Paynim's rout. Whose prows, new miracle. And poop, and sighed. As soon as all their sable crews are out. Are changed anew to leaves, which far and wide. Raised by a sudden breeze, are blown about. And scattered in mid-air, like such light gear. Go eddying with the wind, and disappear. Home, horse and foot, the Nubian host arrayed. By squadrons, all, from wasted Afric go. But to their king, first, thanks Astolfo paid. And said, he an eternal debt should owe. In that he had in person given him aid. With all his might and main against the foe. The skins Astolfo gave them, which confined. The turbid and tempestuous southern wind. I say, enclosed in skins that wind he gave. Which in such fury blows at noon, on high. I moves the shifting plain in many a wave. And fills the eddying sand the troubled sky. To carry with them, and from scathe to save. Their squadrons, lest the dusty whirlwind fly. And bids them, when arrived at home, unnoos. The bladders vent, and let their prisoners loose. When they have lofty atlas passes won. The horses that the Nubian riders bear. Turpin relates, are changed at once to stone. So that the steeds return to what they were. But it is time the Duke to France was gone. Who having thus provided, in his care. For the main places in the Moorish land. Made the hippogriff anew his wings expand. He reached Sardinia at one flight and sheer. Corsica from Sardinia, and then o'er. The foaming sea his venturous course did steer. Inclining somewhat left the griffin soar. In the sea marshes last his light career. He stopped, on rich province's pleasant shore. Where to the hippogriff by him is done. What was erewhile enjoined by sainted John? To him the charge did sainted John commit. When to Provence by that winged courser born. Him never more with saddle or with bit. 
to Gaul, but let him to his lair return. Already had the planet, with her flit. Things lost on earth, of sound deprived his horn. For this not only horse but mute remained. As soon as the holy place Astolfo gained. Thence to Marseilles he came. And came the day. Orlando, and Rinaldo, and Olivier. Arrived therein, upon their homeward way. With good Sabrino, and the better peer. Rogero, not so triumphs that array. Touched by the death of him, their comrade dear. As they for such a glorious victory won. But for that sad disaster, would have done. Of the king slain upon the Paynim part. The news from Sicily to Charles were blown. Sabrino's fate, and death of Brandymart. Nor less of good Rogero had been shown. Charles stood with jocund fate and gladsome heart. Rejoicing he had from his shoulders thrown. The intolerable load whereof the weight. Will for long time prevent his standing straight. To honor those fair pillars that sustain. The state, the holy empire's cornerstone. The nobles of his kingdom Charlemagne. Dispatched, to meet the knights, as far as sown. And from his city with his worthiest train. King, duke, and her, the partner of his throne. Issued amid a fair and gorgeous band. Of noble damsels, upon either hand. The Emperor Charles with bright and cheerful brow. Lords, paladins and people, kinsmen, friends. Fair love to Roland and the others show. Mongrana and Clermont's cry the welkin rends. No sooner, mid that kind and festal show. The interchange of fond embracements ends. Then Roland and his friends Rogero bring. And mid those lords present him to the king. And him Rogero of Risa's son declare. And vouch in valor as his father's peer. Witnesses of his worth our squadrons are. They best can tell his prowess with the spear. Meanwhile, the noble and the lovely pair. Marfisa and gentle Bradamant appear. This runs to fold Rogero to her heart. More coy, that other stands some deal apart. The emperor bids Rogero mount again. Who from his horse had lit, in reverence do. And, side by side, with him his courser reign. Nor aught omits that monarch which may do. The warrior honor, mid his martial train. How the true faith he had embraced he knew. Of all instructed by that band before. When first those paladins set foot ashore. With pomp triumphal and with festive cheer. The troop returns within the city walls. With leaves and garlands green the streets appear. And tapestried all about with gorgeous palls. Of herbs and flowers a mingled rain, where'er. They wend, upon the conquering squadron falls. Which with full hands from stand and window throw. Damsel and dame upon the knights below. At every turn, in various places are. Of sudden structure arch and trophy high. Whereon by Serta's sack is painted fair. Ruin and fire, and feet of chivalry. Scaffolds. Upraised for different sports elsewhere. And merrymake and stage play meet the eye. And, writ with truth, above, below, between. To the empire's saviors, everywhere is seen. With sound of shrilling pipe and trumpet proud. And other festive music, laughter light. Applause and favor of the following crowd. Which scarce found room. Begirt with dames and night. The mighty emperor, mid those greetings loud. Before the royal palace did alight. Where many days he feasted high in hall. His lords, mid tourney. Mummery, mask and ball. His son to Amon on a day made known. His sister he would make Rogero's bride. And, before Olivier and Milo's son, 536. Her to the child by promise had affied. Who think with him that kindred is their none. Wherewith to league themselves, on any side. For valor or nobility of blood. Better than his, nay, none so passing good. Duke Amon heard his heir with some disdain. 
that, without concert with him, and alone. He dared to plight his daughter, whom he fain would marry to the Grecian emperor's son, and not to him that has no kingly reign, nay has not aught that he can call his own, and should not know, how little nobleness is valued without wealth, how virtue less. But Beatrice, his wife, with more despite, arraigns her son, and calls him arrogant, and moves each open way and hidden slight, to break Rogero's match with Bradamant, resolved to tax her every means and might, to make her empress of the wide Levant. Firm in his purpose is Montalban's lord. Nor will in aught forego his plighted word. Beatrice who believes the high-minded fair, is at her hest, exhorts her to reply, rather than she will be constrained to pair. With a poor knight, she is resolved to die. Nor, if this wrong she from Rinaldo bear, will she regard her with a mother's eye. Let her refuse and keep her steadfast course. For her free will Rinaldo cannot force. Silent stands mournful Bradamant, nor dares. Meanwhile her lady mother's speech gainsay. To whom such reverence, and respect, she bears. She thinks no choice is left but to obey. Yet a foul faulted in her eyes appears. If what she will not do, she falsely say. She will not, for she cannot, since above. All guidance, great or small, is mighty love. Deny she dared not, nor yet seem content. So, sighed and spake not. But, when uncontrolled. She could, she gave her secret sorrow vent. While from her eyes the tears like billows rolled. A portion of the pains that her torment. Inflicting on her breast and locks of gold. For this she beat, and those up tore and break. And thus she made lament, and thus she spake. Ah! Shall I will what she wills not, by right? More sovereign mistress of my will than I? Hers shall I hold so cheaply, so to slight? A mother's will, my own to satisfy? Alas! What blemish is so foul to sight? In damsel? What so ill, as to Afi? Myself to husband, reckless of her will. Which, tis my duty ever to fulfill will worth the while. And shall I then to thee, by filial love be forced to be untrue? O oh my Rogero, and surrender me, to a new hope, a new love, and a new desire. Or rather from those ties break free, from all good children to good parents do. Observance, reverence cast aside, and measure. My duty by my happiness, my pleasure, I know, alas! What I should do, I know. That which a duteous daughter doth behove. I know, but what avails it, if not so? My reason moves me as my senses move. If she retires before a stronger foe. Nor can I of myself dispose, for love. Nor think how to dispose, so strict his sway. Nor, saving as he dictates, do and say. Amen and Beatrice's child, the slave. Of love am I. Ah! Miserable me! I for my parents am in hope to have. Pardon and pity, if in fault I be. But, if I anger love, whose prayer shall save. Me from his fury, till one only plea. Of mine the Godhead shall vouchsafe to hear. Nor do me dead as soon as I appear. Alas! With long and obstinate pursuit. To our faith to draw Rogero have I wrought. And finally have drawn. But with what boot? If my fair deed for others good be wrought? So yearly by the bee, whose labor's fruit. Is lost for her, is hive with honey fraught. But I will die ere I the child forsake. And other husband than Rogero take. If I shall not obey my father's hest. Nor mothers, I my brothers shall obey. Of greater wisdom far than them possiest. Nor time hath made that warriors would his prey. And what he wills by Roland is profest. 
and, one and the other, on my side are they. A pair more feared and honored far and wide. Than all the members of my house beside. If them the flower of Claremont's noble tree. The glory and the splendor all account. If all believe our other chivalry. They, more than head o'er tops the foot, surmount. Why would I aim and should dispose of me? Rather than good Rinaldo and the Count? I should not, so much less, as not affide. To Leo, and Rogero's promised bride. If cruel thoughts the afflicted made torment. Rogero's mind enjoys not more repose. For albeit those sad tidings have not vent. Yet in the city, he the secret knows. He o'er his humble fortunes makes lament. Which is enjoying such a good oppose. As unendowed with riches or with rain. Dispensed so widely to a worthless train. Of other goods which nature's hand supplies. Or which acquired by man's own study are. He such a portion in himself espies. Such and so large was never other's share. In that. No beauty with his beauty vies. In that, resistance to his might is rare. The palm by none from him can challenged be. In regal splendor, magnanimity. But they at whose disposal honors lie. Who give at will, and take away renown. The vulgar herd, and from the vulgar eye. Except the prudent man, distinguished none. Nor emperor, pope, nor king, is raised more high. Than these by scepter, mitre, or by crown. Nor save by prudence, save by judgment, given. But to the favored few by partial heaven. This vulgar, to say out what I would say. Which only honors wealth, therewith more smit. Than any worldly thing beside, nor they. Ought heed or ought esteem, unraced with it. Be beauty or be daring what it may. Dexterity or prowess, worth, or wit. Or goodness, yet more vulgar stands confused. In that whereof I speak than in the rest. Rogero said, if Amon is disposed. An empress in his bradament to see. Let not his treaty be so quickly closed. With Leo. Let a year be granted me. In that, meanwhile, I hope, by me deposed. Shall Leo with his royal father be. And I, encircled with their forfeit crown. Shall be for Amon no unworthy son. But if he give without delay, as said. His daughter to the son of Constantine. If to that promise no regard be paid. Which good Rinaldo and the Paladine. His cousin. Erst before the hermit maid. The Marquis Olivier and King Sobrine. What shall I do? Such grievous wrong shall I. Endure, or, rather than endure it, die. What shall I do? Her father then pursue. On whom for vengeance this grave outrage cries? I heed not that the deed is hard to do. Or if the attempt in me is weak or wise. But presuppose that. With his kindred crew. Slain by my hand that unjust elder dies. This will in nothing further my content. Nay it will wholly frustrate my intent. Twas ever my intent, and still, tis so. To have the love, not hatred, of that fair. But should I aim and slay, or bring some woe. By plot or practice, on his house or heir. Will she not justly hold me as her foe? And me, that foeman, as her lord forswear? What shall I do, endure such injury? Ah! No, by heaven! Far rather I will die. Nay die I will not, but with better right. Shall Leo die, who so disturbs my joy? He and his unjust sire, less dear his flight. With Helen paid her paramour of Troy. Nor yet in older time that foul despite. Done to Proserpina, cost such annoy. To bold Pyrithoas, as for her I've lost. My grief of heart shall son and father cost. Can it be true, my life, that to forsake. Thy champion for this Greek should grieve not thee? 
and could thy father force thee him to take? Though join thy brethren with thy sire should be? But, tis my fear that thou wouldst rather make. Accord with all with Amon than with me. And that it seemeth better in thy sight. To wed with Caesar than with simple white. Can it be true that royal name should blind? Imperial title, pomp and majesty. And taint my Bradamant's egregious mind. Her mighty valor and her virtue high. So that. As cheaper, she should cast behind. Her plighted faith, and from her promise fly. Nor sooner she a foe to love be made. Then she no longer say, what once she said. These things Rogero said, and more beside. Discoursing with himself, and in such strain. Oftentimes the afflicted warrior cried. That stander by o'er heard the knight complain. And more than once his grief was signified. To her that was the occasion of his pain. Who no less for his cruel woe, when known. Lamented than for sorrows of her own. But most, of all the sorrows that were said. To vex Rogero, most it works her woe. To hear that he afflicts himself, in dread. Lest for the Grecian prince she him forego. Hence this belief, this error, from his head. To drive, comfort on the night bestow. The trustiest of her bower women, one day. She to Rogero bade these words convey. Rogero, I what I was till death will be. And be more faithful, if I can be more. Deals love in kindness or in scorn with me. Hath doubtful fortune good or ill in store. I am a very rock of faith, by sea. And winds unmoved, which round about it roar. Nor I have changed for calm or storm, nor I. Will ever change to all eternity. Sooner shall file or chisel made of lead. To the rough diamond various forms impart. Than any stroke, by fickle fortune sped. Or love's keen anger. Break my constant heart. Sooner return, to Alp, their fountain head. The troubled streams that from its summit part. Than e'er, for change or chances, good or not. Shall wander from its way my steadfast thought. All power o'er me have I bestowed on you. Rogero, and more than others may divine. I know that to a prince whose throne is new. Was never fealty sworn more true than mine. Nor ever surer state, this wide world through. By king or Kisar was posseest than thine. Thou needst not dig a ditch nor build a tower. In fear lest any rob thee of that power. For if thou hire no aids, assault is none. But what thereon shall I be made in vain? Nor shall it be by any riches won. So vile a price no gentle heart can gain. Nor by nobility, nor kingly crown. That dazzle so the silly vulgar train. Nor beauty, puissant with the weak and light. Shall ever make me thee for other slight. Thou hast no cause, amid thy griefs, to fear. My heart should ever bear new impress more. So deeply is thine image graven here. It cannot be removed, that my heart's core. Is not of wax is proved. For love Wylera. Smote it a hundred times, not once, before. He by his blows a single scale displaced. What time therein his hand thine image traced. Ivory, gem, and every hard-grained stone. That best resists the griding tool, may break. But, save the form it once hath taken, none. Will ever from the graver's iron take. My heart like marble is, or thing least prone. Beneath the chisel's trenchant edge to flake. Love this may wholly splinter, ere he may. Another's beauty in its core and lay. Other and many words with comfort rife. And full of love and faith, she said beside. Which might a thousand times have given him life. Albeit a thousand times the night had died. But, when most clear of the tempestuous strife. In friendly port these hopes appeared to ride. These hopes a foul and furious wind anew. Far from the sheltering land to seaward blew. 
in that the gentle Bradamant, who fain would do far more than she hath signified, with wonted daring armed her heart again, and boldly casting all respect aside, one day stood up before King Charlemagne. And, sire, if ever yet, the damsel cried, I have found favor in your eyes for deed. Done heretofore, deny me not its meed. And I entreat, before I claim my fee, that you to me your royal promise plight. To grant my prayer, and fain would have you see, that what I shall demand is just and right. Thy valor, damsel dear, deserves from me. The boon wherewith thy worth I should requite. Charles answered, and I to content thee swear. Though of my kingdom thou shouldst claim a share. The boon for which I to your highness sue. Is not to let my parents me accord. Pursued the martial damsel, save he shoe. More prowess than myself, to any lord. Let him contend with me in tourney, who. Would have me, or assay me with the sword. Me as his wife let him that wins me, where. Let him that loses me, with other pair. With cheerful face the emperor made reply. The entreaty was well worthy of the maid. And that with tranquil mind she might rely. He would accord the boon for which she prayed. This audience was not given so secretly. But that the news to others were conveyed. Which on that very day with all were told. In the ears of Beatrice and Amon Old. Who against Bradamant with fury flame. And both alike, with sudden anger fraught. For plainly they perceive. That in her claim. She for Rogero more than Leo wrought. And active to prevent the damsel's aim. From being to a safe conclusion brought. Privily take her from King Charles's court. And thence to Rocca Forte's tower transport. A castle this, which royal Charlemagne. Had given to Amon some few days before. Built between Carcassonne and Perpignan. On a commanding point upon the shore. Resolved to send her eastward, there the twain. As in a prison kept her evermore. Willing or kneeling, so must she forsake. Rogero, and for lord must Leo take. The marshal made of no less modest vein. Then bold and full of fire before the foe. Albeit no guard on her the castellane. Hath set, and she is free to come or go. Observant of her sire, obeys the rein. Yet prison, death, and every pain and woe. To suffer is resolved that constant maid. Before by her Rogero be betrayed. Rinaldo, who thus ravished from his hand. By ancient Amon's craft his sister spied. And saw he could no more in wedlock's band. Dispose of her, by him in vain affide. Of his old sire complains, and him doth brand. Laying his filial love and fear aside. But little him Rinaldo's words molest. Who by the maid will do as likes him best. Rogero, bearing this and sore afraid. That he shall lose his bride. And Leo take. If left alive, by force or love the maid. Resolved within himself, but nothing spake. Constantine's heir should perish by his blade. And of Augustus him a god would make point five thirty seven. He, save his hope deceived him and was vain. Would sire and son deprive of life and reign. His limbs and arms, which Trojan Hectors were. And afterwards the Tartar kings, he steeled. Bade reign Frontino, and his wanted wear. Exchanged, crest, surcoat and emblazoned shield. On that emprise it pleased him not to bear. His argent eagle on its azure field. White as a lily, was a unicorn. By him upon a field of crimson worn. He chose from his attendant squires the best. And willed none else should him accompany. And gave him charge, that ne'er by him expressed. Rogero's name in any place should be. Crossed muse and rhine, and pricked upon his quest. Through the Austrian countries into Hungary. Along the right bank of the Danube made. And rode an end until he reached Belgrade. 
where save into dark Danube makes descent. And to the sea, increased by him, doth flow. He saw the imperial ensign spread, and tent. And white pavilion, thronged with troops below. For Constantine to have that town was bent. Anew, late won by the Bulgarian foe. In person, with his son, is Constantine. With all the empires force his host to line. Within Belgrade, and through the neighboring peak. Even to its bottom which the waters lave. The Bulgar fronts him, and both armies seek. A watering place in the intermediate save. A bridge across that rapid stream the Greek. Would fling, the Bulgar would defend the wave. When thither came Rogero, and engaged. Beheld the hosts in fight, which hotly raged. The Greeks in that affray were four to one. And with pontoons to bridge the stream supplied. And a bold semblance through their host put on. Of crossing to the river's further side. Leo meanwhile was from the river gone. With covert guile, he took a circuit wide. Then thither made return, his bridges placed. From bank to bank, and passed the stream in haste. With many horse and foot in battle dight. Who nothing under twenty thousand rank. Along the river rode the Grecian knight. And fiercely charged his enemies in flank. The emperor, when his son appeared in sight. Leading his squadrons on the farther bank. Uniting bridge and bark together, crossed. Upon his part the stream with all his host. King Vatran, chief of the Bulgarian band. Wise, bold, withal a warrior, here and there. Labored in vain such onset to withstand. And the disorder of his host repair. When Leo pressed him sore, and with strong hand. The king to earth beneath his courser bear. Whom at the prince's hest, for all to fierce. Is he to yield, a thousand falchions pierce. The Bulgar host hath hitherto made head. But when they see their sovereign is laid low. And everywhere that tempest wax and spread. They turn their backs where erst they faced the foe. The child, who mid the Greeks, from whom they fled. Was born along, beheld that overthrow. And bound himself their battle to restore. As hating Constantine and Leo more. He spurs Frontino, that in his career. Is like the wind, and passes every steed. He overtakes the troop, that in their fear. Fly to the mountain and desert the mead. Many he stops and turns, then rests his spear. And, as he puts his courser to his speed. So fearful is his look, even Mars and Jove. Are fright in their azure realms above. Advanced before the others, he descried. A cavalier, in crimson vest, whereon. With all its stock in silk and gold was spied. A pod, like millet, in embroidery done. Constantine's nephew, by the sister's side. He was, but was no less beloved than son. He split like glass his shield and scaly rind. And the long lance appeared a palm behind. He left the dead and drew his shining blade. Upon a squadron, whom he saw most nigh. And now at once, and now at other made. Cleft bodies, and made hearts from shoulders fly. At throat, at breast and flank the warrior laid. Smote hand, and arm, and shoulder, bust, and thigh. And through that champagne ran the reeking blood. As to the valley foams the mountain flood. None that behold those strokes maintain their place. So are they all bewildered by their fear. Thus suddenly the battle changed its face. For, catching courage from the cavalier. The Bulgar squadrons rally, turn, and chase. The Grecian troops that fled from them Wylera. Lost was all order in a thought, and they. With all their banners fled in disarray. Leo Augustus on a swelling height. Seeing his followers fly, hath taken post. Where woeful and bewildered, for to sight. Nothing in all the country round is lost. He from his lofty station eyes the knight. Who with his single arm destroys that host. 
and cannot choose, though so his prowess harms. But praise that peer and own his worth in arms. He knew full well by ensignory displayed. By surcoat and by gilded panoply. That albeit to the foe he furnished aid. That champion was not of his chivalry. Wondering his superhuman deed surveyed. And now an angel seemed in him to see. To scourge the Greeks from choirs above descended. Whose sins so oft and oft had heaven offended. And, as a man of great and noble heart. Where many others would have hatred sworn. Enamored of such valor, on his part. Would not desire to see him suffer scorn. For one that died, six Grecians death less smart. Would cause that prince. And better had he borne. To lose as well a portion of his reign. Than to behold so good a warrior slain. As baby, albeit its fond mother beat. And drive it forth in anger, in its fear. Neither to sire nor sister makes retreat. But to her arms returns with fondling cheer. So Leo, though Rogero in his heat. Slaughters his routed van and threats his rear. Cannot that champion hate. Because above. His anger is the admiring prince's love. But if young Leo loved him and admired. Meseems that he an ill exchange hath made. For him Rogero loathed. Nor aught desired. More than to lay him lifeless with his blade. Him with his eyes he sought, for him inquired. But Leo's fortune his desire gainsaid. Which with the prudence of the practiced Greek. Made him in vain his hated rival seek. Leo, for fear his bands be wholly spent. Bid sound the assembly his Greek squadrons through. He to his father a quick courier sent. To pray, that he would pass the stream anew. Who, if the way was open, well content. Might with his bargain he, and with a few. Whom he collects, the Grecian cavalier. Recrossed the bridge by which he passed Wylera. Into the power o oh, the Bulgars many fall. Stalin from the hilltop to the riverside. And they into their hands had fallen all. But for the river's intervening tide. From the bridge many drop, and drown withal. And many that ne'er turned their heads aside. Thence to a distant ford for safety made. And many were dragged prisoners to Belgrade. When done was that day's fight, wherein, since born. To ground the Bulgar king his life did yield. His squadrons would have suffered scathe and scorn. Had not for them the warrior won the field. The warrior, that the snowy unicorn. Wore for his blazon on a crimson shield. To him all flock. In him with joy and glee. The winner of that glorious battle see. Some bow and some salute him, of the rest. Some kissed the warrior's feet, and some his hand. Round him as closely as they could they pressed. And happy those are deemed, that nearest stand. More those that touch him. For to touch a blessed. And supernatural thing believes the band. On him with shouts that rent the heavens they cried. To be their king, their captain, and their guide. As king or captain them will he command. As like them best, he said, but will not lay. On scepter or on leading staff his hand. Nor yet Belgrade will enter on that day. For first, ere farther flies young Leo's band. And they across the river make their way. Him will he follow, nor forego, until. That Grecian leader he o'ertake and kill. A thousand miles and more for this alone. He thither measured, and for naught beside. He saith, and from the multitude is gone. And by a road that's shown to him doth ride. For towards the bridge is royal Leo flown. Haply lest him from this the foe divide. Behind him pricks Rogero with such fire. The warrior calls not, nor awaits, his squire. Such vantage Leo has in flight, to flee. He rather may be said than to retreat. The passage open hath he found and free. And then destroys the bridge and burns his fleet. Rogero arrived not, till beneath the sea. 
The sun was hid, nor lodging found, his beat. He still pursued, and now shone forth the moon. But town or village found the warrior none. Because he wots not where to lodge, he goes. All night, nor from his load frontino frees. When the new sun his early radiance shows. A city to the left Rogero sees. And there all day determines to repose. As where he may his wearied courser ease. Whom he so far that livelong night had pressed. Nor had he drawn his bit, nor given him rest. Ungiardo had that city in his guard. Constantine's liegeman, and to him right dear. Who, since upon the Bulgars he had warred. Much horse and foot had sent that emperor. Here. Now entered, for the entrance was not barred. Rogero, and found such hospitable cheer. He to fare further had no need, in trace. Of better or of more abundant place. In the same hostelry with him a guest. Was lodged that evening a Romanian knight. Present what time the child with lance in rest. Succored the Bulgars in that cruel fight. Who hardly had escaped his hand, sore pressed. And scared as never yet was living white. So that he trembled still, disturbed in mind. And deemed the knight of the unicorn behind. He by the buckler knew as soon as spied. The cavalier, whose arms that blazon bear. For him that routed the Byzantine side. By hand of whom so many slaughtered were. He hurried to the palace, and applied. For audience, weighty tidings to declare. And, to Ungiardo led forthwith, rehearsed. What shall by men in other strain be versed? Canto. Chapter 45. Young Leo doth from death Rogero free. For him Rogero Bradamant hath won. Making that made appear less strong to be. Disguised in fight like Leo. And, that done. Straight in despite would slay himself, so he. By sorrow, so by anguish is foredone. To hinder Leo of his destined wife. Marfisa works, and kindles mighty strife. By how much higher we see poor mortal go. On fortune's wheel, which runs a restless round. We so much sooner see his head below. His heels, and he is prostrate on the ground. The Lydian, Syracusan, Samian 538 show. This truth, and more whose names I shall not sound. All into deepest dolor in one day. Hurled headlong from the height of sovereign sway. By how much more depressed on the other side. By how much more the wretch is downwards hurled. He so much sooner mounts, where he shall ride. If the revolving will again be twirled. Some on the murderous block have well nigh died. That on the following day have ruled the world. Ventidius, Servius, Marius this have shown. In ancient days, King Louis in our own. King Louis, stepfather of my duke's son. Who, when his host at Sant Albino fled. Left in his clutch by whom that field was won. Was nigh remaining shorter by the head. Nor long before the great Corvinus 539 run. A yet more fearful peril, worse bested. Both throned, when overblown was their mischance. One king of Hungary, one king of France. Tis plain to sight, through instances that fill. The page of ancient and of modern story. That ill succeeds to good, and good to ill. That glory ends in shame, and shame in glory. And that man should not trust, deluded still. In riches, realm, or field of battle, gory. With hostile blood, nor yet despair, for spurns. Of fortune, since her wheel forever turns. Through that fair victory, when overthrown. Were Leo and his royal sire, the knight. Who won that battle to such trust is grown. In his good fortune and his peerless might. He. Without following, without aid, alone. So is he prompted by his daring sprite. Thinks, mid a thousand squadrons in array. Footmen and horsemen, sire and son to slay. 
but she, that wills no trust shall e'er be placed. In her by man, to him doth shortly show. How white by her is raised, and how abased. How soon she is a friend, how soon a foe. She makes him no Rogero, that in haste. Is gone to work that warrior shame and woe. The cavalier, which in that battle dread. With much ado had from his falchion fled. He to Ungiardo hastens to declare. The child who put the imperial host to flight. Whose carnage many years will not repair. Here passed the day and was to pass the night. And Seth, that fortune, taken by the hair. Without more trouble, and without more fight. Will, if he prisons him, the Bulgars bring. Beneath the yoke and lordship of his king. Ungiardo from the crowd, which had pursued. Thither their flight from the ensanguined plain. For, troop by troop, a countless multitude. Arrived. Because not all the bridge could gain. Knew what a cruel slaughter had ensued. For there the moiety of the Greeks was slain. And knew that by a cavalier alone. One host was saved, and one was overthrown. And that undriven he should have made his way. Into the net, and of his own accord. Wondered, and showed his pleasure, at the say. In visage, gesture, and in joyful word. He waited till Rogero sleeping lay. Then softly sent his guard to take that lord. And made the valiant child, who had no dread. Of such a danger, prisoner in his bed. By his own shield accused, that witness true. The child is captive in Novigarud 540. To Ungiardo, worst among the cruel, who. Marvelous mirth to have that prisoner shooed. And what, since he was naked, could he do? Bound, while his eyes were yet by slumber glued? A courier, who the news should quickly bear. Ungiardo bids to Constantine repair. Constantine on that night with all his host. Raising his camp, from Save's green shore had gone. With this in Belitic he takes post. Androphilus, his sister's husband's town. Father of him, whose arms in their first joust. As if of wax had been his habergen. Had pierced and carved the puissant cavalier. Now by Ungiardo pent in dungeon drear. Here from attack the emperor makes assure. The city walls and gates on every side. Lest, from the Bulgar squadrons ill secure. Having so good a warrior for their guide. His broken Grecians worse than fear endure. Deeming the rest would by his hand have died. Now he is taken, these breed no alarms. Nor would he fear the banded world in arms. The emperor, swimming in a summer sea. Knows not for very pleasure what to do. Truly the Bulgars may be said to be. Vanquished, he cries, with bold and cheerful brow. As he would feel assured of victory. That had of either arm deprived his foe. So the emperor was assured, and so rejoiced. When good Rogero's fate the warrior voiced. No less occasion has the emperor's son. For joying. For besides that he anew. Trusts to acquire Belgrade, and tower and town. Throughout the Bulgars' country to subdue. He would by favors make the knight his own. And hopes to rank him in his warlike crew. Nor need he envy, guarded by his blade. King Charles's, Orlando's, or Rinaldo's aid. Theodora was by other thoughts posseist. Whose son was killed by young Rogero's spear. Which through his shoulders, entering at his breast. Issued a palm's breadth in the stripling's rear. Constantine's sister she, by grief oppressed. Fell down before him. And with many a tear. That dropped into her bosom, while she sued. His heart with pity softened and subdued. I still before these feet will bow my knee. Save on this felon, good my lord, she cried. Who killed my son, to venge me thou agree. Now that we have him in our hold. Beside. That he thy nephew was, thou sayest how thee. He loved, thou sayest what feats upon thy side. 
that warrior wrought. Thou sayest if thou wilt blot. Thine own good name, if thou avenge him not. Thou sayest how righteous heaven by pity stirred. From the wide champagne, red with Grecian gore. Bears that fell man. And like a reckless bird. Into the fowler's net hath made him sore. That for short season, for revenge deferred. My son may mourn upon the Stygian shore. Give me, my lord, I pray, this cruel foe. That by his torment I may soothe my woe. So well she mourns, and in such moving wise. And efficacious doth she make lament. Nor from before the emperor will arise. Though he three times and for the dame has hent. And to uplift by word and action tries. That he has forced her wishes to content. And thus, according to her prayer, commands. The child to be delivered to her hands. And, not therein his orders to delay. They take the warrior of the unicorn. To cruel Theodora. But one day. Of respite has the night, to have him torn. In quarters, yet alive, to rend and slay. Her prisoners publicly with shame and scorn. Seems a poor pain. And he must undergo. Other unwanted and unmeasured woe. At the commandment of that woman dread. Chains on his neck and hands and feet they don. And put him in a dungeon cell, where thread. Of light was never by Apollo thrown. He has a scanty mess of moldy bread. And sometimes is he left two days with none. And one that doth the place of jailer fill. Is prompter than herself to work him ill. Oh! If Duke Amon's daughter brave and fair. Of if Marfisa of exalted mind. Had heard Rogero's sad estate declare. And how he in this guise in prison pined. To his rescue either would have made repair. And would have flung the fear of death behind. Nor had bold Bradamant, intent to aid. Respect to Beatrice or Amon paid. Meanwhile King Charlemagne upon his side. Heeding his promise made in solemn sort. That none should have the damsel for his bride. That of her prowess in the field fell short. Not only had his sovereign pleasure cried. With sound of trumpet in his royal court. But in each city subject to his crown. Hence quickly through the world the brute was blown. Such the condition which he bids proclaim. He that would with Duke Amon's daughter wed. Must with the sword contend against that dame. From the sun's rise until he seeks his bed. And if he for that time maintains the game. And is not overcome, without more said. The lady is a judge to have lost the stake. Nor him for husband can refuse to take. The choice of arms must be by her foregone. No matter who may claim it in the course. And by the damsel this may well be done. Good at all arms alike, on foot or horse. Amon, who cannot strive against the crown. Cannot and will not, yields at length par force. He much the matter sifts, and in the end. Resolves to court with Bradamant to wend. Though for the daughter collar and disdain. The mother nursed, yet that she honor do. Might have, she garments, dyed in different grain. Had wrought for her, of various form and hue. Bradamant for the court of Charlemagne. Departs, and finding not her love, to her view. His noble court appears like that no more. Which had appeared to her so fair before. As he that hath beheld a garden, bright with flowers and leaves in April or in May. And next beholds it, when the sun his light hath sloped toward the north, and shortened day. Finds it a desert horrid to the sight. So, now that her Rogero is away, to Bradamant, who thither made resort, no longer what it was appeared that court. What is become of him she doth not dare demand, lest more suspicion thence be bred. But listens still, and searches here and there. That this by some, unquestioned, may be said. Knows he is gone, but has no notion where. The warrior, when he went, his steps had sped. 
because, departing thence, he spake no word. Save to the squire who journeyed with his lord. Oh! How she sighs! How fears the gentle maid! Hearing Rogero, as it were, was flown. Oh! How above all other terrors, weighed! The fear, that to forget her he was gone. That, seeing Amon still his wish gainsaid. And that to wed the damsel hope was none. He fled, perchance, so hoping to be loosed. From toils wherein he by her love was noosed. And that with further and the youthful lord. Her from his heart more speedily to chase. Will row from realm to realm, till one afford. Some dame, that may his former love efface. Even, as the proverb says, that in a board. One nail drives out another from its place. A second thought succeeds, and paints the youth. Arraigned of fickleness, as full of truth. And her reproves for having lent an ear. To a suspicion so unjust and blind. And so, this thought absolves the cavalier. And that accuses, and both audience find. And now this way, now that, she seemed to veer. Nor this, nor that, irresolute of mind. Preferred, yet still to what gave most delight. Most promptly leaned, and loathed its opposite. And thinking, ever and anon, anew. On that so oft repeated by the night. As for grave sin, remorse and sorrow grew. That she had nursed suspicion and affright. And she, as her Rogero were in view. Would blame herself, and would her bosom smite. And say, I see, twas ill such thoughts to nurse. But he, the cause, is even cause of worse. Love is the cause, that in my heart inlaid. Thy form, so graceful and so fair to see. And so thy darling and thy wit portrayed. And worth, of all so brooded, that to me. It seems impossible that wife or maid. Blessed with thy sight, should not be fired by thee and that she should not all her art apply. To unbind, and fasten thee with other tie. Ah! Well away! If in my thought love so. Thy thought, as thy fair visage, had designed. This, am I well assured, in open show. As I unseen believe it, should I find. And be so quit of jealousy, that foe. Would not still harass my suspicious mind. And, where she is by me repulsed with pain. Not quelled and routed would she be, but slain. I am like miser, so intent on gear. And who hath this so buried in his heart? That he, for hoarded treasure still in fear. Cannot live gladly from his wealth apart. Since I Rogero neither see nor hear. More puissant far than hope, O fear. Thou art. To thee, though false and idle, I give way. And cannot choose but yield myself thy prey. But I, Rogero, shall no sooner spy. The light of thy glad countenance appear. Against mine every credence, from mine eye. Concealed, and woe is me, I know not where. Oh! How true hope false fear shall from on high. Depose withal, and to the bottom bear. Ah! Turn to me, Rogero. Turn again. And comfort hope, whom fear hath almost slain. As when the sun withdraws his glittering head. The shadows lengthen, causing vain affright. And as the shadows, when he leaves his bed. Vanish, and reassure the timid white. Without Rogero so I suffer dread. Dread lasts not, if Rogero is in sight. Return to me, return, Rogero, lest my hope by fear should wholly be oppressed. As every spark is in the night alive, and suddenly extinguished when tis morn, when me my son doth of his rays deprive, against me fell in fear uplifts his horn. But they the shades of night no sooner drive, then fears are past and gone, and hopes return. Return, alas! Return, O radiance dear! And drive from me that foul, consuming fear. 
if the sun turn from us and shorten day. Earth all its beauties from the sight doth hide. The wild winds howl, and snows and ice convey. Bird sings not, nor is leaf or flower espied. So, whensoever thou thy gladsome ray. O my fair son, from me dost turn aside. A thousand, and all evil, dreads, make drear. Winter within me many times a year. Return, my son, return. And springtide sweet. Whichever more I long to see, bring back. Dislodge the snows and ice with genial here. And clear my mind, so clouded o'er and black. As Philomel, or Progne, with the meat. Returning, which her famished younglings lack. Mourns o'er an empty nest, or as the dove. Laments himself at having lost his love. The unhappy Bradamant laments her so. Fearing the child is reft from her and gone. While often tears her visage overflow. But she, as best she can, conceals her moan. Oh! How, oh! How much worse would be her woe! If what she knew not to the maid were known. That, prisoned and with pain and pine consumed. Her consort to a cruel death was doomed. The cruelty which by that Belle de Mille was practiced on the prisoned cavalier. And who prepared the wretched child to kill? By torture new and pains unused Wylera. While so Roger opined, the gracious will of heaven conveyed to gentle Leo's ear. And put into his heart the means to aid. And not to let such worth be overlaid. The courteous Leo that Rogero loved. Not that the Grecian knew how or that he. Rogero was, but by that valor moved. Which soul and superhuman seemed to be. Thought much. And mused, and planned, how it behoved. And found at last a way, to set him free. So that his cruel aunt should have no right. To grieve or say he did her a despite. In secret, Leo with the man that bore. The prison keys a parley had, and said. He wished to see that cavalier, before. Upon the wretch was done a doom so dread. When it was night, one, faithful found of yore. Bold, strong, and good in brawl, he thither led. And, by the silent warder taught that none. Must know, t'was Leo, was the door undone. Leo, escorted by none else beside. Was led by the compliant Castellane. With his companion, to the tower, where steed. Was he, reserved for nature's latest pain. There round the neck of their unwary guide. Who turns his back the wicket to unchain. A slipknot Leo and his follower cast. And, throttled by the noose, he breathes his last. 541. The trap appraised, by rope from thence suspended. For such a need, the Grecian cavalier. With lighted flambeau in his hand, descended. Where, straightly bound. And without sun to cheer. Rogero lay, upon a grate extended. Less than a palm's breadth of the water clear. To kill him in a month, or briefer space. Nothing was needed but that deadly place. Lovingly Leo clipped the child, and, me. O cavalier! Thy matchless valor, cried. Hath an indissoluble bands to thee. In willing and eternal service, tried. And wills thy good to mine preferred should be. And I for thine my safety set aside. And weigh thy friendship more than sire, and all. Whom I throughout the world my kindred call. I Leo am, that thou what fits mayst know. Come to thy succor, the Greek emperor's son. If ever Constantine, my father, tro. That I have aided thee, I danger run. To be exiled. Or I with troubled brow. Regarded for the deed that I have done. For thee he hates because of those thy blade. Put to the rout and slaughtered near Belgrade. He his discourse with more beside pursues. That might from death to life the child recall. And all this while Rogero's hands doth loose. Infinite thanks I owe you, 
cries the thrall. And I the life you gave me, for your use. Will ever render back, upon your call. And still, at all your need, I for your sake. And at all times, that life will promptly stake. Rogero is rescued, and the jailer slain. Is left in that dark dungeon in his place. Nor is Rogero known, nor are the twain. Leo the warrior, free from bondage base. Brings home, and there in safety to remain. Persuades, in secret. Four or six days space. Meanwhile for him will he retrieve the gear. And Courser, by Ungiardo reft Wylera. Open the jail is found at dawn of light. The jailer strangled, and Rogero gone. Some think that these or those had helped his flight. All talk, and yet the truth is guessed by none. Well may they think by any other white. Rather than Leo had the deed been done. For many deemed he had cause to have repaid. The child with scathe, and none to give him aid. So wildered by such kindness, so immersed. In wonder, is the rescued cavalier. So from those thoughts is he estranged, that erst. So many weary miles had made him steer. His second thoughts confronting with his first. Nor these like those, nor those like these appear. He first with hatred, rage, and venom burned. With pity and with love then wholly yearned. Much muses he by night and much by day. Nor cares for aught, nor aught desires beside. By equal or more courtesy to pay. The mighty debt that him to Leo tied. Be his life long or short, or what it may. Albeit to Leo's service all applied. Dies he a thousand deaths, he can do not. But more will be deserved, Rogero thought. Thither meanwhile had tidings been conveyed. Of Charles's decree, that who in nuptial tie. Would yoke with bradamant, with trenchant blade. Or lance must with the maid his prowess try. These news the Grecian prince so ill apaid. His cheek was seen to blanch with sickly dye. Because, as one that measured well his might. He knew he was no match for her in fight. Communing with himself, he can supply. He sees, the valor wanting with his wit. And the strange knight with his own ensignory, whose name is yet unknown to him, will fit. Him he against Frank Champion, far and nigh, believes he may for force and daring pit. And if the knight to that emprise agree, vanquished and taken Bradamant will be. But two things must he do, must, first, dispose. That cavalier to undertake the emprise. Then send afield the champion, whom he chose. In mode, that none suspect the youth's disguise. To him the matter Leo doth disclose. And after praise in efficacious wise. That he the combat with the maid will claim. Under false colors and in others' name. Much weighs the Grecian's eloquence. But more. Then eloquence with good Roger weighed. The mighty obligation which he bore. That debt which cannot ever be repaid. So, albeit it appeared a hardship sore. And thing well nigh impossible, he said. With blither face than heart, that Leo's will. In all that he commands he would fulfill. Albeit no sooner he the intent expressed. Then with sore grief Rogero's heart was shent. Which, night and day, and ever, doth molest. Ever afflict him, ever more torment. And though he sees his death is manifest. Never will he confess he doth repent. Rather than not with Leo's prayer comply. A thousand deaths, not one, the child will die. Right sure he is to die, if he forego. The lady, he foregoes his life no less. His heart will break through his distress and woe. Or, breaking not with woe and with distress. He will, himself, the bands of life undo. And of its clay the spirit dispossess. For all things can he better bear than one. Then see that gentle damsel not his own. To die is he disposed. But how to die? 
Cannot as yet the sorrowing Lord decide. Sometimes he thinks his prowess to belie. And offer to her sword his naked side. For never death can come more happily. Than if her hand the fatal falchion guide. Then seize. Except he wins the martial maid. For that Greek prince, the debt remains unpaid. For he with bradament, as with a foe. Promised to do, not feign, a fight in mail. And not to make of arms a seeming show. So that his sword should Leo ill avail. Then by his word will he abide. And though. His breast now these now other thoughts assail. All from his bosom chased the generous youth. Save that which moved him to maintain his truth. With the emperor's license, armor to prepare. And steeds meanwhile had wrought his youthful son. Who with such goodly following as might square. With his degree, upon his way was gone. With him Rogero rides, through Leo's care. Equipped with horse and arms, that were his own. Day after day the squadron pricks, nor tarries. Until arrived in France, arrived at Paris. Leo will enter not the town, but nigh. Pitches his broad pavilions on the plain. And his arrival by an embassy. Makes known that day to royal Charlemagne. Well pleased is he, and visits testify. And many gifts the monarch's courteous vein. His journeys cause the Grecian prince displayed. And to dispatch his suit the sovereign prayed. To send afield the damsel. Who denied. Ever to take in wedlock any lord. Weaker than her, for she should be his bride. Or he would perish by the lady's sword. Charles undertook for this, and, on her side. The following day upon the listed sword. Before the walls, in haste, enclosed that night. Appeared the martial maid, equipped for fight. Rogero passed the night before the day. Wherein by him the battle should be done. Like that which felon spends. Condemning to pay. Life's forfeit with the next succeeding son. He made his choice to combat in the fray. All armed. Because he would discovery shun. Nor barred steed he backed, nor lance he shook. Nor other weapon than his falchion took. No lance he took, yet was it not through fear. Of that which Argalia Wylam swayed. Astolfo's next. Then hers, that in career. Her foemen ever upon earth had laid. Because none weaned such force was in the spear. Nor that it was by necromancy made. Excepting royal Gallifron alone. Who had it forged, and gave it to his son. Nay, bold Astolfo, and the lady who. Afterwards bore it, deemed that not to spell. But simply to their proper force, was due. The praise that they in knightly joust excel. And with whatever spear they fought, those two. Believe that they should have performed as well. What only makes that knight the joust forego. Is that he would not his frontino show. For easily that steed of generous kind. She might have known, if him she had espied. Whom in Montalban, long to her consigned. The gentle damsel had been wont to ride. Rogero, that but schemes, but hath in mind. How he from Brandiment himself shall hide. Neither Frontino nor yet other thing. Whereby he may be known, a field will bring. With a new sword will he the maid await. For well he knew against the enchanted blade. As soft as paste would prove all mail and plate. For never any steel its fury stayed. And heavily with hammer, to rebate. Its edge, as well he on this falchion laid. So armed, Rogero in the lists appeared. When the first dawn of day the horizon cheered. To look like Leo, o'er his breast is spread. The surcoat that the prince is wont to wear. And the gold eagle with its double head. He blazoned on the crimson shield doth bear. And, what the child's disguisement well may stead. Of equal size and stature are the pair. In the other's form presents himself the one. That other lets himself be seen of none. 
Dordona's martial maid is of a vein. Right different from the gentle youths, who soar. Hammers and blunts the falchion's tempered grain. Lest it his opposite should cleave or bore. She wets her steel, and into it would fain. Enter, that stripling to the quick to gore. Yeah, would such fury to her strokes impart. That each should go directly to his heart. As on the start the generous barb inspired. When he the signal full of fire attends. And paws now here now there, and opens wide. His nostrils, and his pointed ears extends. So the bold damsel, to the lists defied. Who knows not with Rogero she contends. Seem to have fire within her veins, nor found. Resting place, waiting for the trumpet's sound. As sometimes after thunder sudden wind. Turns the sea upside down. And far and nigh. Dim clouds of dust the cheerful daylight blind. Raised in a thought from earth, and world heaven high. Scud beasts and herd together with the hind. And into hail and rain dissolves the sky. So she upon the signal bared her brand. And fell on her rogero, sword in hand. But well built wall, strong tower, or aged oak. No more are moved by blasts that round them rave. No more by furious sea is moved the rock. Smote day and night by the tempestuous wave. Then in those arms, secure from hostile stroke. Which erst to Trojan Hector Vulcan gave. Moved was he by that ire and hatred rank. Which stormed about his head, and breast, and flank. Now aims that Marshal made a trenchant blow. And now gives point, and wholly is intent. Twixt plate and plate to reach her hated foe. So that her stifled fury she may vent. Now on this side, now that, now high, now low. She strikes, and circles him, on mischief bent. And evermore she rages and repines. As balked of every purpose she designs. As he that layeth siege to well-walled town. And flanked about with solid bulwarks, still. Renews the assault. Now fain would batter down. Gateway or tower, now gaping foss would fill. Yet vainly toils, for entrance is there none. And wastes his host, I frustrate of his will. So sorely toils and strives without avail. The damsel, nor can open plate or mail. Sparks now his shield, now helm, now cuirass scatter. While straight and back strokes, aimed now low, now high. Which good Rogero's head and bosom batter. And arms. By thousands and by thousands fly. Faster than on the sounding farm roof patter. Hailstones descending from a troubled sky. Rogero, at his ward, with dexterous care. Defends himself, and ne'er offends the fair. Now stopped, now circled, now retired the knight. And oft his hand his foot accompanied. And lifted shield, and shifted sword in fight. Where shifting he the hostile hand espied. Either he smote her not, or, die he smite. Smote, where he deemed least evil would betide. The lady, ere the westering sun descend. Desires to bring that duel to an end. Of the edict she remembered her, and knew. Her peril, save the foe was quickly sped. For if she took not in one day, nor slew. Her claimant, she was taken. And his head. Phoebus was now about to hide from view. Nigh Hercules' pillars, in his watery bed. When first she'd gone missed out her power to cope. With the strong foe. And to abandon hope. By how much more hope fails the damsel, so. Much more her anger waxes, she her blows. Redoubling, yet the harness of her foe. Will break, which through that day unbroken shows. As he, that at his daily drudgery slow. Sees night on his unfinished labor close. Hurries and toils and moils without avail. Till wearied strength and light together fail. Didst thou, O miserable damsel, trow. Whom thou wouldst kill, if in that cavalier. 
matched against thee thou didst Roger Ono. On whom depend thy very life threads? Air. Thou killed him thou wouldst kill thyself. For thou. I know, dost hold him than thyself more dear. And when he for Rogero shall be known. I know these very strokes thou wilt bemoan. King Charles and peers him sheathed in plate and shell. Deem not Rogero, but the Emperor's son. And viewing in that combat fierce and fell. Such force and quickness by the stripling shone. And, without e'er offending her, how well. That knight defends himself, now change their tone. Esteem both well assorted, and declare. The champions worthy of each other are. When Phoebus wholly under water goes. Charlemagne bids the warring pair divide. And Bradamant, nor boots it to oppose. Allots to youthful Leo as a bride. Not there Rogero tarried to repose. Nor loosed his armor, nor his helm untied. On a small hackney, hurrying sore, he went. Where Leo him awaited in his tent. Twice in fraternal guise and oftener through. Leo his arms about the cavalier. And next his helmet from his head withdrew. And kissed him on both cheeks with loving cheer. I would, he cried, that thou wouldst ever do. Buy me what pleaseth thee, for thou wilt ne'er. Weary my love, at any call I lend. To thee myself and state, these friendly spend. Nor see I recompense, which can repay. The mighty obligation that I owe. Though of the garland I should disarray. My brows, and upon thee that gift bestow. Rogero, on whom his sorrows press and pray. Who loathes his life, immersed in that deep woe. Little replies, the ensigns he had worn. Returns, and takes again his unicorn and showing himself spiritless and spent. From thence as quickly as he could withdrew. And from young Leo's to his lodgings went. When it was midnight, armed himself anew. Saddled his horse, and sallied from his tent. He takes no leave, and none his going view winky face. And his frontino to that road addressed. Which seemed to please the goodly courser best. Now by straight way and now by crooked wound. Frontino, now by wood and wide champagne. And all night with his rider paced that round. Who never ceased a moment to complain. He called on death, and therein comfort found. Since broke by him alone is stubborn pain. Nor saw, save death, what other power could close. The account of his insufferable woes. Whereof should I complain, he said, woe is me. So of my every good at once forlorn? Ah! If I will not bear this injury. Without revenge, against whom shall I turn? For I, besides myself, none other see. That hath inflicted on me scathe and scorn. Then I to take revenge for all the harm. Done to myself, against myself must arm. Yet was but to myself this injury done. Myself to spare, because this touched but me. I haply could, yet hardly could, be one. Nay, I will say outright, I could not be. Less can I be, since not to me alone. But Bradamant, is done this injury. Even if I could consent myself to spare. It fits me not unvenged to leave that fair. Then I the damsel will avenge, and die. Nor this disturbs me, whatsoever betide. For, baiting death, I know not aught, whereby. Defense against my grief can be supplied. But I lament myself alone, that I. Before offending her, should not have died. O oh, happier fortune! Had I breathed my last. In Theodora's dungeon prison fast. Though she had slain, had tortured me before. She slew, as prompted by her cruelty. At least the hope would have remained in store. That I by Bradamant should pitted be. But when she knows that I loved Leo more. Than her, that, of my own accord and free. Myself of her, I for his good, deprive. Dead will she rightly hate me or alive. 
These words he said and many more, with sigh. And heavy sob with all accompanied. And, when another sun illumed the sky. Mid strange and gloomy woods himself espied. And, for he desperate was and bent to die. And he, as best he could, his death would hide. This place to him seemed far removed from view. And fitted for the deed that he would do. He entered into that dark woodland, where. He thickest trees and most entangled, spied. But first Frontino was the warrior's care. Whom he unharnessed wholly, and untied. O oh my Frontino, if thy merits rare. I could reward, thou little cause, he cried. Shouldst have to envy him, so highly graced. Who soared to heaven, and mid the stars was placed. 542. Nor Solaris, nor Arion 543 was Wylera. Worthier than thee, nor merited more praise. Nor any other steed, whose name we hear. Sounded in Grecian or in Latin lays. Was any such in other points thy peer? None of them, well I know, the vaunt can raise. That such high honor and such courtesy. Were upon him bestowed, as were on thee. Since to the gentlest maid, of fairest die. And boldest that hath been, or evermore. Will be, thou wast so dear, she used to tie. Thy trappings. And to thee thy forage bore. Dear wast thou to my lady love, ah. Why? Call I her mine, since she is mine no more? If I have given her to another lord. Why turn I not upon myself this sword? If him these thoughts so harass and torment. That bird and beast are softened by his cries. For, saving these, none hears the sad lament. Nor sees the flood that trickles form his eyes. You are not to believe that more content. The Lady Bradamant in Paris lies. Who can no longer her delay excuse. Nor Leo for her wedded lord refuse. Ere she herself to any consort tie. Beside her own Rogero, she will fain. Do what so can be done. Her word belie. Anger friends, kindred, court, and Charlemagne. And if she nothing else can do, will die. By poison or her own good falchion slain. For not to live appears far lesser woe. Than, living, her Rogero to forego. Rogero mine, ah! Wonder gone, she cried. Art thou, and canst thou so far distant be? Thou heardest not this royal edict cried. A thing concealed from none, expecting thee? Faster than thee would none have hither hide. I what, hadst thou known this, ah! Wretched me! How can I e'er in future think of aught? Saving the worst that can by me be thought? How can it be, Rogero, thou alone? Hast read not what by all the world is read? If thou hast read it not, nor hither flown. How canst thou but a prisoner be, or dead? But well I wot, that if the truth were known. This Leo will for thee some snare have spread. The traitor will have barred thy way. Intent. Thou shouldst not him by better speed prevent. From Charles I gained the promise, that to none. Less puissant than myself should I be given. In the reliance thou wouldst be that one. With whom I should in arms have vainly striven. None I esteemed, excepting thee alone. But well my rashness is rebuked by heaven. Since I by one am taken in this wise. Unfamed through life for any fair emprise. If I am held as taken, since the night. I had not forced to take nor yet to slay. A thing that is not, in my judgment, right. Nor I to Charles's sentence will give way. I know that I shall be esteemed as light. If what I lately said, I now unsay. But of those many ladies that have passed. For light, I am not, I, the first or last. Enough I to my lover faith maintain. And, firmer than a rock, am still found true. And far herein surpass the female train. That were in olden days, or are in new. 
nor, if they me as fickle shall arraign. Care I, so good from fickleness and sue. Though I am lighter than a leaf be said. So I be forced not with that Greek no Wednesday. These things and more beside the damsel bright. Twixt which oft sobs and tears were interposed. Ceased not to utter through the livelong night. Which upon that unhappy day had closed. But, when within Samaria's caverned height. Nocturnus with his troops of shades reposed. Heaven, which eternally had willed the maid. Should be Rogero's consort. Brought him aid. This moves the hot Marfisa, when tis morn. To appear before the king. To whom that maid. Seth, to the child, her brother, mighty scorn. Was done, nor should he be so ill apaid. That from him should his plighted wife be torn. And not thereof unto the warrior said. And on whoever lists she will in strife. Prove Bradamant to be Rogero's wife. And this, before all others, will prove true. On her, if to deny it she will dare. For she had to Rogero, in her view. Spoken those words, which they that marry swear. And with all ceremony won't and do. So was the contract sealed between the pair. They were no longer free, nor could forsake. The one the other, other spouse to take. Whether Marfisa true or falsely spake. I well believe that, rather with intent. Young Leo's purpose, right or wrong, to break. Then tell the truth, she speaks. And with consent. Of Bradamant doth that avowal make. For to exclude the hated Leo bent. And of Rogero to be repossessed. This she believes her shortest way and best. Sorely by this disturbed, King Charlemagne. Bade Bradamant be called, and to her told. That which the proud Marfisa would maintain. And Amon present in the press behold. Bradamant drops her head, nor treats as vain. Nor vouches what avows that virgin bold. In such confusion, they may well believe. That fierce Marfisa speaks not to deceive. Joy good Orlando and joy Rinaldo show. Who view in valorous Marfisa's plea. A cause the alliance shall no further go. Which sealed already Leo deemed to be. And yet, in spite of stubborn Amon's no. Bradamant shall Rogero's consort be. And they may, without strife, without despite. Done to Duke Amon's, give her to the knight. For if such words have passed between the twain. Fast is the knot and cannot be untied. They what they vowed more fairly will obtain. And without further strife are these affied. This is a plot, a plot devised in vain. And ye deceive yourselves, Duke Amon cried. For, were the story true which ye have feigned. Believe not therefore that your cause is gained. For granting what I will not yet allow. And what I to believe as yet demur. That weakly to Rogero so her vow. Was plighted, as Rogero's was to her. Where was the contract made, and when and how? More clearly this to me must ye aver. Either it was not so, I am advised. Or was before Rogero was baptized. But if it were before the youthful knight. A Christian was, I will not heed it, I. For, twixt a faithful and a painim white. I deem that not avails the marriage tie. For this not vainly in the doubtful fight. Should Constantine's fair son have risked to die. Nor Charlemagne for this, our sovereign lord. Will forfeit, I believe, his plighted word. What now you say you should before have said. While yet the matter was unbroke, and air. Charles at my daughter's prayer that edict made. Which has drawn Leo to the combat here. Orlando and Rinaldo were gainsaid. So before royal Charles by Clermont's peer. And equal Charlemagne heard either side. But neither would for this nor that decide. As in the southern or the northern breeze. The green wood murmurs. And as on the shore. When Aeolus with the god that rules the seas. Is wroth, the hoarse and hollow breakers roar. 
so a loud rumor of this strife, that flees. Through France. And spreads and circles evermore. Affords such matter to rehearse and hear. That not beside is bruised far or near. These with Rogero, those with Leo side. But the most numerous are Rogero's friends. Who against Amon, ten to one, divide. Good Charlemagne to neither party bends. But wills that cuss shall be by justice tried. And to his parliament the matter sends. Marfisa, now the bridal was deferred. Appeared anew, and other questions stirred. And said, in that anther cannot have. Bradamant, while my brother is alive. Let Leo, if the gentle maid he crave. His foe enlisted fight of life deprive. And he, that sends the other to his grave. Freed from his rival, with the lady wife. Forth with this challenge, as erewhile the rest. To Leo was declared at Charles's behest. Leo who if he had the cavalier. Of the unicorn, believed he from his foe. Was safe, and thought no peril would appear. Too hard a feat for him. And knew not how. Thence into solitary woods and drear. That warrior had been hurried by his woe. Him gone for little time and for disport. Believed, and took his line in evil sort. This shortly Leo was condemned to rue. For he, on whom too fondly he relied. Nor on that day nor on the following too. Appeared, nor news of him were signified. And combat with Rogero was, he knew. Unsafe, unless that knight was on his side. So sent, to eschew the threatened scathe and scorn. To seek the warrior of the unicorn. Through city, and through hamlet, and through town. He sends to seek Rogero, far and near. And not content with this, himself is gone. In person, on his steed, to find the peer. But of the missing warrior tidings none. Nor he nor any of the court would hear. But for Melissa, I for other verse. Reserve myself, her doings to rehearse. Canto. Chapter 46. After long search for good Rogero made. Him Leon finds, and yields to him his prize. Informed of all, already with that maid. He wives. Already in her bosom lies. When thither he that Sars's scepter swayed. To infect such bliss with impious venom highs. But falls in combat. And, blaspheming loud. To Acheron descends his spirit proud. I, if my chart deceives me not, shall now. In little time behold the neighboring shore. So hope withal to pay my promised vow. To one, so long my guide through that wide roar. Of waters, where I feared, with troubled brow. To scathe my bark or wander evermore. But now, methinks, yeah, now I see the land. I see the friendly port its arms expand. A burst of joy, like thunder to my ear. Rumbles along the sea and rends the sky. I chiming bells, I shrilling trumpets hear. Confounded with the people's cheerful cry. And now their forms, that swarm on either pier. Of the thick crowded harbor, I descry. All seem rejoiced my task is smoothly done. And I so long a course have safely run. What beauteous dames and sage, here welcome me. With them what cavaliers the shore adorn. 544. What friends. To whom I owe eternity. Of thanks for their delight at my return. Mama, Ginevra, with the rest I see. Correggio Seed, 545 on the harbor's furthest horn. Veronica de Gambara 546 is here. To Phoebus and the Aeonian choir so dear. With Julia, a new Ginevra is in sight. Another offset from the selfsame tree. Hippolyta Sforza and Trivulsha Bright 547. Bread in the sacred cavern, I with thee. Emilia Pia, and thee, Marguerite. Angela Borgia, Graziosa, C. And fair Richarda D. Este. 548 Low. The Twain. 
Blanche and Diana, with their sister train. 549. Beauteous, but wiser and more chaste than fair. I Barbara Turca, linked with Laura, no, 550. Nor beams the sun upon a better pair. Twixt I and D and where the Moorish waters flow. Behold Ginevra. That rich gem and rare. Which gilds the house of Malatesta so, 551. That never worthier or more honored thing. Adorned the dome of Kisar or of King. If she had dwelt in Rimini of yore. What time, from conquered Gaul returning home. Julia stood fearing on the river shore. To ford the stream and make a foe of Rome. He every banner would have bowed before. That dame, discharged his trophies, and such doom. Such pact would have received as liked her best. And haply ne'er had freedom been oppressed. The consort of my lord of Bazzolo. Behold! The mother, sisters, cousinhood. 552. Them of Torello, Bentivoglio. Palavigines and Visconti's brood, 553. Lo! She to whom all living dames forego. The palm, and all of Grecian, Latin blood. Or barbarous, all that ever were, whose name. For grace and beauty most is noised by fame. Julia Gonzaga, 554 She that were so were. She moves, where'er she turns her lucid eyes. Not only is in charms without a peer. But seems a goddess lighted from the skies. With her is paired her brother's wife. 555 Who ne'er. Swerved from her plighted faith, I good and wise. Because ill fortune bore her long despite. Lo! Aragonian Anna, Vasto's light. 556. And gentle, courteous, and as sage as fair. Temple of love and truth and chastity. With her, her sister 557 dims all beauty, where. Her radiance shines. Lo! One that hath set free. Her conquering lord from Orcus dark repair. And him in spite of death and destiny. Beyond all modern instance, raised on high. To shine with endless glory in the sky. My ladies of Ferrara, those of Gay. Urbino's court are here, and I descry. Mantua's dames, and all that fair array. Which Lombardy and Tuscan towns supply. The cavalier amid that band, whom they. So honor, unless dazzled is mine eye. By those fair faces, is the shining light. Of his Arezzo, and a culty height. 558. Adorned with scarlet hat, and scarlet pall. His nephew Benedict 559 low. There I see. With him Campeggio and Mantua's cardinal, 560. Glory and light of the consistory. And, if I dote not, mark how one and all. In face and gesture show such mighty glee. At my return, no easy task, t'would seem. So vast an obligation to redeem. With them Lactantius is, Claude Ptolemy. Tresino, Pansa, and Capilupi mine 561. Latino Giovanil 562 it seems to me. Sasso 563 and Molza 564 and Florian Height Montine. 565. With him, by whom through shorter pathway we are led to the Ascrian font divine. Julio Camillo, 566 and me seems that I. Berna, and Sanga, and Flaminio 567 spy. Lo! Alexander of Farnese 568 and O. Learned company that follows in his train. Fedro, Capella, Madeline, Portio. Surnamed the Bolognese, the Volterrain. 569. Blojo, Pyrio, Vita, famed for flow. Of lofty eloquence of exhaustless vein. Mashuro, Lascari, and Navajero. And Andrew Morrow, and the monk Severo.570. Lo! Two more Alexanders. Of the tree. 
of the Orologi one, and one Guarino. Mario di Alvito, and of royalty. That scourge, divine Pietro Aretino. I two Girolamos amid them see. Of Veritade and the Cittadino. See the Minardo, the Leonicino. Panizzato, Celio, and Tiacrino. 571. Bernardo Capel, Peter Bembo here. I see, through whom our pure, sweet idiom rose. And who, of vulgar usage winnowed clear. Its genuine form in his example shows. Behold an abyssin, that in his rear. Admires the pains which he so well bestows. I fracastoro, Bevazano note. And Trifon Gabriel, Tasso more remote. 572. Upon me Nicholas Tiepoli. And Nicholas Amanio fix their eyes. With Anthony Fulgoso, who to spy. My boat near land shows pleasure and surprise. There, from those dames apart, my Valerie. Stands with Berignan 573 haply to devise. With him how, evermore by woman harmed. By her he shall not evermore be charmed. Of high and superhuman genius, tied. By love and blood, lo. Pico and Pio true. He that approaches at the kinsman's side. So honored by the best, I never knew. But, if by certain tokens signified. He is the man I so desire to view. That San Azaro, 574 who persuades the nine. To leave their fountain for the foaming brine. Diligent, faithful secretary, lo. The learned Pistophilus, 575 mine Angier here. And the Acciajuoli their joint pleasure show. That for my bark there is no further fear. There I my kinsman Malaguzzo know. And mighty hope from Adoardo here. That these my nest notes shall by friendly wind. Be blown from Calpes rock to furthest IND. Joys Victor Fausto, Tancred Joys to view 576. My sail, and with them joy a hundred more. Women and men I see, a mingled crew. At my return rejoicing, crowd the shore. Then, since the wind blows fair, nor much to do. Remains, let me my course delay no more. And turning to Melissa, in what way? She rescued good Rogero let me say. Much bent was this Melissa, as I know. I many times have said to you Wylera. That Bradamant in wedlock should bestow. Her hand upon the youthful cavalier. And so at heart had either's weal and woe. That she from hour to hour of them would hear. Hence ever on that quest she spirits sent. One still returning as the other went. A prey to deep and stubborn grief, reclined. Mid gloomy shades Rogero they descried. Firm not to swallow food of any kind. Nor from that purpose to be turned aside. And so to die of hunger he designed. But weird Melissa speedy aid supplied. Who took a road, from home forth issuing, where? She met the Grecian emperor's youthful heir. Leo that, one by one, dispatched his train. Of followers, far and wide, through every born. And afterwards, in person went in vain. To find the warrior of the unicorn. The wise enchantress, that will sell and reign. Had on that day equipped a demon, born. By him, in likeness of a hackney horse. Constantine's son encountered in her course. If such as your ingenuous mean, she cried. To Leo, is your soul's nobility. And corresponding with your fair outside. Your inward goodness and your courtesy. Some help. Some comfort, sir, for one provide. In whom the best of living knights we see. Who, save ye help and comfort quickly lend is little distant from his latter end. The best of knights will die of all, who don. Or e'er don sword and buckler, the most fair. And gentle of all warriors that are gone. Or who throughout the world yet living are. And simply for a courteous deed, if none. 
shall comfort to the youthful sufferer bear. Then come, sir, for the love of heaven, and try. If any counsel succor may supply. It suddenly came into Leo's mind. The knight of whom she parleyed was that same. Whom throughout all the land he sought to find. And seeking whom, he now in person came. So that obeying her that would persuade. Such pious work, he spurred behind the dame. Who thither led, nor tedious was the way. Where nigh reduced to death the stripling lay. They found Rogero fasting from all food. For three long days, so broken down, with pain. The knight could but upon his feet have stood. To fall, albeit unpushed, to ground again. With helm on head, and with his falchion good. Begirt, he lay reclined in plate and chain. A pillow of his buckler had he made. Where the white unicorn was seen portrayed. There thinking what an injury he had done. To his lady love, how ingrate, how untrue. To her had been, not simple grief alone. O'erwhelmed him, to such height his fury grew. He bit his hands and lips. While pouring down. His cheeks, the tears unceasing ran, and through. The passion that so wrapped his troubled sprite. Nor Leo nor Melissa heard the night. Nor therefore interrupts he his lament. Nor checks his sighs, nor checks his trickling tears. Young Leo halts, to hear his speech intent. Lights from his courser, and towards him steers. He knows that of the sorrows which torment. Love is the cause, but yet from naught appears. Who is the person that such grief hath bred? For by Rogero this remains unsaid. Approaching nearer and yet nearer, now. He fronts the weeping warrior, face to face. Greets with a brother's love, and stooping low. His neck encircles with a fast embrace. By the lamenting child I know not how. Is liked his sudden presence in that place. Who fears annoy or trouble at his hand. And lest he should his wish for death withstand. Him with the sweetest words young Leo plied and with the warmest love that he could show. Let it not irk thee, to the child he cried. To tell the cause from whence thy sorrows flow. For few such desperate evils man betide. But that there is deliverance from his woe. So that the cause be known. Nor he bereft. Of hope should ever be, so life be left. Much grieve I thou wouldst hide thyself from me that known me for thy faithful friend and true. Not only now I am so bound to thee, that I the knot can never more undo, but even from the beginning, when to be, thy deadly foeman I had reason do. Hope then that I will succor thee with pelf, with friends, with following, and with life itself. Nor shun to me thy sorrow to explain, and I beseech thee leave to me to try if wealth avail to free thee from thy pain. Art, cunning, open force, or flattery. If my assistance is employed in vain, the last relief remains to thee to die. But be content a while this deed to shun, till all that thou canst do shall first be done. He said, and with such forceful prayer appealed. So gently and benignly soothed his moan. That good Rogero could not choose but yield whose heart was not of iron or of stone. Who deemed, unless he now his lips unsealed. He should a foul discourteous deed have done. He fain would have replied, but made a say. Yet twice or thrice, ere words could find their way. My lord, when known for what I am, and me. Now shalt thou know, he made at last reply. I what thou, like myself, content wilt be and haply more content, that I should die. Know me for him so hated once by thee. Rogero who repaid that hate am I. And now tis many days since with intent. Of putting thee to death from court I went. Because I would not see my promised bride. Born off by thee, in that Duke Amon's love. And favor was engaged upon thy side. But, for man purposes, and God above. 
disposes, thy great courtesy, well tried. In a sore need, my fixed resolve did move. Nor only I renounced the hate I bore, but purpose to be thine for evermore. What time I as Rogero was unknown. Thou madest suit I would obtain for thee. The Lady Bradamant. Which was all one. As to demand my heart and soul from me. Whether thy wish I rather than mine own. Sought to content, thou hast been made to see. Thine is the Lady. Her in peace possess. Far more than mine I prize thy happiness. Content thee, that deprived of her, as well. I should myself of worthless life deprive. For better I without a soul could dwell. Than without Bradamant remain alive. And never while these veins with life blood swell. Canst thou with her legitimately wive. For vows erewhile have been between us said. Nor she at once can with two husbands Wednesday. So filled is gentle Leo with amaze. When he the stranger for Rogero knows. With lips and brow unmoved, with steadfast gaze. And rooted feet, he like a statue shows. Like statue more than man, which votaries raise. In churches, for acquittance of their vows. He deems that courtesy of so high a strain. Was never done nor will be done again. And that he him doth for Rogero know. Not only that goodwill he bore Wylera. Abates not, but augments his kindness so. That no less grieves the Grecian cavalier. Then good Rogero for Rogero's woe. For this, as well as that he will appear. Deservedly an emperor's son, although. In other things outdone, he will not be. Defeated in the race of courtesy. And says, that day my host was overthrown. Rogero, by thy wandrouse valor, though. I had thee at despite, if I had known. Thou was Rogero, as I know it now. So me thy virtue would have made thine own. As then it made me, knowing not my foe. So hatred from my bosom would have chased. And with my present love have straight replaced. That I Rogero hated, ere I knew. Thou was Rogero, will I not deny. But think not that I further would pursue. The hatred that I bore thee. And had I. When the eye from thy darksome dungeon drew. Describe the truth, as this I now descry. Such treatment shouldst thou then have had, as thou. Shalt have from me. To thine advantage, now. And if I willingly had done so then. When not, as I am now, obliged to thee. How much more gladly should I now. And when. Not doing so, I should with reason be. Deemed most ungrateful amid ingrate men. Since thou foregoest thine every good for me. But I to thee restore thy gift, and, more. Glady than I received it, this restore. The damsel more to thee than me is due. And though for her deserts I hold her dear. If that fair prize some happier mortal drew. I think not I my vital thread should shear. Nor would I by thy death be free to woo. That from the hallowed bands of wedlock clear. Wherein the lady hath to thee been tied. I might possess her as my lawful bride. Not only Bradamant would I forego. But whatsoe'er I in the world possess. And rather forfeit life than ever know. That grief, through me, should such a night oppress. To me is thy distrust great cause of woe. That since thou couldst dispose of me no less. Than of thyself, thou, rather than apply. To me for succor, wouldst of sorrow die. These words he spake, and more to that intent. Too tedious in these verses to recite. Refuting evermore such argument. As might be used in answer by the knight. Who said, at last, I yield, and am content. To live. But how can I ever requite? The obligation, which by me is owed. To thee that twice hast life on me bestowed? Melissa generous wine and goodly cheer. Thither bade carry, in a thought obeyed. And comforted the mourning cavalier. 
who would have sunk without her friendly aid. Meanwhile the sound of steeds Frontino's ear had reached, and thither had he quickly made him Leo's squires at his commandment caught, and saddled, and to good Rogero brought, who, though by Leo helped, with much ado, and labor sore the gentle courser scaled. So wasted was the vigor which some few short days before, in fighting field, availed to overthrow a banded host, and do the deeds he did, in cheating armor mailed, departing thence, ere they had measured more than half a league, they reached an abbey whore, wherein what of that day was yet unworn. They passed, the morrow, and succeeding day, until the warrior of the unicorn, his vigor had recruited by the stay. He, Leo, and Melissa then return to Charles's royal residence, where lay an embassy, arrived the eve before, which from the Bulgars land a message bore, since they that had for king proclaimed the night, besought Rogero thither to repair, through these their envoys deeming they would light, on him in Charles's court, where they should swear, fidelity, and yield to him his right and he from them the crown receive and wear. Rogero's squire who served this band to steer, has published tidings of the cavalier. He of the fight has told which at Belgrade. Erewhile Rogero for the Bulgars won. How Leo and his sire were overlaid. And all their army slaughtered and undone. Wherefore the Bulgars him their king had made. Their royal line excluding from the throne. Then how Ungiardo took the warrior brave, and him to cruel Theodora gave. He speaks with that of certain news, which say, how good Rogero's jailer was found dead. The prison broke and prisoner away. Of what became of him was nothing said. Towards the city by a secret way. Nor was his visage seen, Rogero sped. He, on the following morning, and his friend, Leo, to Charles's court together wend. To Charles's court he wends, the bird he bore. Of gold with its two heads, of crimson hue. Its field, and that same vest and ensigns wore. As was erewhile devised between the two. And such as in the listed fight before. His bruised and battered armor was in shoe. So that they quickly knew the cavalier from him that strove with Bradamant Wylera, in royal ornaments and costly gown. Unarmed, beside him doth young Leo fare, a worthy following and of high renown. Before, behind him, and about him are. He bowed to Charlemagne, who from his throne had risen to do honor to the pair, then holding still Rogero by the hand. So spake, while all that warrior closely scanned. Behold the champion good, that did maintain. From dawn till fall of day the furious fight. And since by Bradamant nor taken, slain. Nor forced beyond the barriers was the knight. He is assured his victory is plain. Dread sir, if he your edict reads aright. And he hath won the lady for his wife. So comes to claim the guerdon of the strife. Besides that by your edict's tenor none. But him can to the damsel lift his eyes. Is she deserved by deeds of valor done? What other is so worthy of the prize? Should she by him that loves her best be won? None passes him, nor with the warrior vies. And he is here to fight against all foes. That would in arms his right in her oppose. King Charlemagne and all his peerage stand. Amazed, who well believe the Grecian peer. With Bradamant had striven with lifted brand. In fight, and not that unknown cavalier. Marfisa, thither born amid the band. That crowded round the royal chair to hear. Hardly till Leo made an ending stayed. Then pressed before the listening troop, and said. Since here Rogero is not, to contest. The bride's possession with the stranger knight. Lest he, as undefended, be oppressed and forfeit so without dispute his right. 
On his behalf I undertake this quest. His sister I, against whatever white, shall here assert a claim to Bradamant. Or more desert than good Roger Ovant. She spake this with such anger and disdain. Many surmised amid the assistant crew. That, without waiting leave from Charlemagne, what she had threatened she forthwith would do. No longer Leo deemed it time to feign. And from Rogero's head the helm withdrew. And to Marfisa, for himself to speak. Behold him here and ready, cried the Greek. As looked old Aegeus at the accursed board 577. Seeing it was his son to whom, so willed. His wicked consort, that Athenian lord. Had given the juice from deadly drugs distilled. Whom he, if he had recognized his sword. Though but a little later, would have killed. So looked Marfisa when, disclosed to view. She and the stranger knight Rogero knew. And ran forthwith to clip the cavalier. Nor could unclasp her arms, with loving show. Charlemagne, Roland, and Rinaldo, here. And there, fix friendly kisses on his brow. Nor him Sir Duden, nor Sir Olivier. Nor King Sabrino can caress a now. Nor paladin nor peer, amid the crew. Wearies of welcoming that warrior true. Leo, who well can play the spokesman, now. That warlike band hath ceased to clip the night. Tells before Charles and all that audience, how. Rogero's daring, how Rogero's might. Albeit to his good squadron scathe and woe. Which at Belgrade he witnessed in that fight. So moved him that they overweighed all harms. Inflicted on him by the warrior's arms. So that to her Rogero being brought. Who would all havoc of the youth have made? He setting all his family at naught. Had out of durance vile the knight conveyed. And how Rogero, that the rescue wrought. By Leo might be worthily repaid. Did that high courtesy, which can by none. That ever were or e'er will be, outdone. And he from point to point continuing, said. That which Rogero had for him achieved. And after, how by sorrow sore bested. In that to leave his cherished wife he grieved. He had resolved to die, and, almost dead. Was only by his timely aid relieved. And this he told so movingly, no I. Remained, amid those martial many, dry. So efficaciously he after prayed. To the obstinate Duke Amon, not alone. The stubborn sire of Bradamant he swayed. And to forego his settled purpose won. But that proud lord in person did persuade. To beg Rogero's pardon, and his son. And son-in-law to be beseeched the knight. And thus to him his Bradamant was plight. To her, where, of her feeble life in doubt. She in a secret chamber made lament. Through many a messenger, with joyful shout. And mickle haste, the happy tidings went. Hence the warm blood, that stagnated about. Her heart, by her first sorrow thither sent. Ebbed at this notice in so full a tide. Well nigh for sudden joy the damsel died. Of all her vigor is she so foregone. She cannot on her feeble feet rely. Yet what her force must needs to you be known. And what the damsel's magnanimity. None doomed to prison, wheel or halter, none. Condemned some other evil death to die. About whose brows the sable band is tied. Rejoices more to hear his pardon cried. Joys Claremont's, Joys Mangrana's noble house 578. Those kindred branches that fresh know to view. With equal grief Count Anselm overflows. Gone, Falcon, Genie, and Janami's crew. Yet they meanwhile beneath contented brows. Conceal the dark and envious thoughts they brew. As the fox waits the motions of the hare. They wait their time for vengeance, and forbear. Besides that oftentimes before the rage. Of Roland and Rinaldo on them fell. Though they were calmed by Charles's counsel sage. And common danger from the infidel. They had new cause for grief in Bertilage. 
slain by their foemen and Sir Pinabel. But they concealed their hatred, and endured. Those griefs, as of the matter ill assured. Those envoys of the Bulgars that had made. For Charles's court, as hath erewhile been shown. Hoping to find the knight, whose shield portrayed. The unicorn, elected to their throne. Bless the good fortune which their hope repaid. Seeing that valiant warrior, and fall down. Before his feet, and him in humble speech. Again to seek their bulgary beseech. Where kept for him in Adrianople are. The scepter and the crown, his royal due. But let him succor to his kingdom bear. For, to their further scathe, advices shew. Constantine doth a mighty host prepare. And thitherward in person moves anew. And they, of their elected king Posseist, hope the Greek empire from his hands to rest. He accepts the realm, by their entreaties won. And, to afford them aid against their foes, will went to Bulgary when three months are done. Save fortune otherwise of him dispose. When this is heard by that Greek emperor's son, he bids Rogero on his faith repose. For since by him the Bulgar's realm is swayed, peace between them and Constantine is made. Nor needeth he depart in haste, to guide his Bulgar bands against the Grecian foe. For all that he had conquered far and wide, he will persuade his father to forego. None of the virtues, in Rogero spied, moved Bradamant's ambitious mother so, or so to endear her son-in-law availed. As hearing now that son a sovereign hailed, the rich and royal nuptials they prepare. As well befits him, by whose care, tis done. Tis done by Charles, and with such cost and care. As if, twere for a daughter of his own. For such the merits of the damsel are. And such had all her martial kindred shown. Charles would not think he should exceed due measure. If spent for her was half his kingdom's treasure. He a free court bids cry, whither his way. Securely every one that wills may wend. And offers open lists till the ninth day. To whosoever would in arms contend. And bids build bowers a field, and interlay. Green boughs therein, and flowers and foliage blend. And make those bowers so gay with silk and gold. No fairer place this ample world doth hold. Guested within fair Paris cannot be. The countless foreign bands that thither fare. Who, rich and poor, of high and low degree. And Greeks and Latins and barbarians are. There is no end of lord and embassy. That thither from all ends of earth repair. All lodged conveniently, to their content. Beneath pavilion, booth, and bower and tent. The weird Melissa against the coming night. With singular and matchless ornament. Had for that pair the nuptial chamber dight. Whereon long time before she had been bent. Long time before desirous of the right. Had been that dame, presageful of the event. Presageful of futurity, she knew. What goodly fruit should from their stems ensue. She had prepared the genial, fruitful bed. Under a broad pavilion. One more rich. Adorned, and jocund, never overhead. Did this for peace or war its master pitch. Was in the world, before or after, spread. And this from Thracian strand had borne the witch. The costly prize from Constantine she bore. Who for disport was tented on that shore. She with young Leo's leave, or rather so. The Grecian's admiration to obtain. And a rare token of that art to show. Which on hell's mighty dragon puts the rein. And at her pleasure rules that impious foe. Of heaven, together with his evil train. Bade demons the pavilion through mid-air. To Paris from Constantinople bear. From Constantine that lay therein, who swayed. The Grecian Empire's scepter, at midday. This with its cordage, shaft whereby, t'was stayed. And all within and out, she bore away. And of the costly tent, through air conveyed. 
for young Rogero made a lodging gay. The bridal ended, this her demon crew. Thither, from whence, t'was brought, conveyed anew. Two thousand tedious years were nigh complete. Since this fair work was fashioned by the lore. Of Trojan maid, warmed with prophetic heat. Who, mid long labor and, mid vigil sore. With her own fingers all the storied sheet. Of the pavilion had embroidered o'er. Cassandra height. That made to Hector brave. Her brother he, this costly present gave. The courteous cavalier, the kindliest shoot. That ever from her brother's stock should grow. Albeit she knew far distant from its root. With many a branch between. Should be that bow. In silk and gold upon the gorgeous suit. Of hangings had she wrought in goodly show. Much prize that gift, while living, Priam's son. For its rare work and her by whom, t'was done. But when by treachery perished Priam's heir, 579. And Greeks the Trojans scathed in cruel sort. When her gates opened by false Sinon were. And direr ill was done than tales report. This plunder fell to Menelaus' share. Wherewith to Egypt's land he made resort. There left it to King Proteus, Egypt's lord. In ransom for his prisoned wife restored, 580. She Helen height, her Menelaus to free. To Proteus the pavilion gave away. Which, passing through the line of Ptolemy. To Cleopatra fell, from her in fray. Agrippa's band on the Lucadian sea. Bore off the treasure, amid other prey. Augustus and Tiberius aired the loom. Kept till the time of Constantine in Rome. That Constantine, whom thou shall ever rue. Fair Italy, while the heavens above are rolled. Constantine to Byzantium, when he grew. Weary of Tiber, bore the tent of old. Melissa from his namesake this withdrew. Its pole of ivory and its cord of gold. And all its cloth with beauteous figures fraught. Fairer Apelles' pencil and never wrought. Here the three graces in gay vesture gowned. Assisted the delivery of a queen. 581. Not in four ages in this earthly round. Was ever born a boy so fair of mien. Jove, Venus, Mars, and Mercury renowned. For fluent speech, about the child are seen. Him have they strewed, and stew with heaven's perfume. Ambrosial odors and ethereal bloom. Hippolytus, a little label said. Inscribed upon the baby's swaddling clothes. By the hand him fortune leads in age more staid. And valor as a guide before him goes. An unknown band in sweeping vest arrayed. With long descending locks, the tapestry shows. Deputed by Corvinus to desire. The tender infant from his princely sire. 582. He reverently parts from Hercules' side. From her, his lady mother, Eleanor. And to the Danube wends, where far and wide. They meet the boy, and as a god adore. The prudent king of Hungary is descried. Who does do honor to his ripened lore. In yet unripe, yeah, raw and tender years. And ranks the stripling above all his peers. One is there that in his green age and new. Places Strigonius Crozier in his hand. Him ever at Corvinus' side we view. Whether he doth in court or camp command. Whether against the Turk or German crew. The puissant monarch leads his martial band. Watchful Hippolytus is at his side. And gathers virtue from his generous guide. There is it seen. How he his blooming age. Divides mid arts and wholesome discipline. The secret spirit of the ancient page. Their Fuscus well instructs him to divine. 583. This must thou shun. That follow, seems the sage. To say, if thou immortally wouldst shine. Fashioned withal with so much skill and care. By her who wrought that work, their gestures were. A cardinal he next is seen, though young. In years, at council in the Vatican. 
where for deep wisdom graced by eloquent tongue. With wonder him the assembled conclave scan. What will he be, they seem to say among themselves, when he is ripened into man? Oh! If on him St. Peter's mantle fall! What a blessed era! What a happy call! That brave youth's liberal pastimes are designed. In other place. On alpine mountain hoar. Here he affronts the bear of rugged kind. And there in rushy bottom bays the boar. Now on his genet he outgoes the wind. And drives some goat or gallant hind before. Which falls o'ertaken on the dusty plain. By his descending falchion cleft in twain. He is descried, amid a fair array. Of poets and philosophers elsewhere. This pricks for him the wandering planet's way. These earth, these heaven for his instruction square. Some chant sad elegies, some verses gay. Lays lyric or heroic, singers there. He with rich music hears, nor moves apace. But what in every step is sovereign grace? The first part of the storied walls portrayed. That noble prince's gentle infancy. Cassandra all beside had overlaid. With fears of justice, prudence, modesty. Valor, and that fifty virtue, which hath made. With those fair sisters closest amity. I speak of her that gives and that bestows. With all these virtues guilt, the stripling glows. In this part is the princely youth espied. With that unhappy duke, the insubri's head. 584. In peace they sit in council at his side. Together armed, the serpent banner spread. The youth by one unchanging faith is tied. To him forever, well or ill bested. His followers still in flight before the foe. His guide in peril, his support in woe. Him in another quarter you descry. For his Ferrara and her duke in fear. Who by strange proofs doth sift, and certify. To his just brother, vouched by tokens clear. The close device of that ill treachery. Hatched by those kinsmen whom he held most dear. Hence justly he becomes that title's heir. Which Rome yet free bade righteous Tully bear. Elsewhere in martial panoply he shone. Hasting to help the church with lifted blade. With scanty and tumultuous levy gone. Against well-ordered host in arms arrayed. And lo! The coming of that chief alone. Affords the priestly band such present aid. Extinguished are the fires before they spread. He came, he saw, he conquered, may be said. Elsewhere he stands upon his native strand. Fighting against the mightiest armament. That whensoever against Argive land. Or Turkish, from Venetian harbor went. Scatters and overthrows the hostile band. And, spoil and prisoners to his brother sent. Nothing reserves save that unfading bay. The only prize he cannot give away. Upon those figures gazed the courtly crew 585. But read no meaning in the storied wall. Because there was not any one to shew. That these were things hereafter to befall. Those fair and quaintly fashioned forms they view. With pleasure, and peruse the scrolls withal. But Bradamant, to whom the whole was known. By wise Melissa taught, rejoiced alone. Though not instructed in that history. Like gentle Bradamant, the affianced knight. Remembers how amid his progeny. Atlantes often praised this Hippolyte. Who faithfully could verse such courtesy. As Charlemagne vouchsafed to every wight. With various games that solemn feast was cheered. And charged with viands I the board appeared. Who is a valiant knight, is here descried. For daily broke a thousand lances lay. Singly to combat or in troops they ride. On horseback or afoot, they mix in fray. Worthiest of all Rogero is espied. Who always conquers, jousting night and day. And so, in wrestling, dance, and every deed, still from its rivals bears away the mead. On the last day, 
when at their festive cheer was seated solemnly the assembled band. Where at Charles's left was placed the wedded peer, and Bradamant upon his better hand. Across the fields an armed cavalier, of semblance haughty, and of stature grand, was seen to ride towards the royal table, himself and courser wholly clothed in sable. The king of Argier he, that for the scorn, received from her, when on the bridge he fell, never to clothe himself in arms had sworn, nor draw the falchion nor bestride the cell, till he had like an anchorite outworn, a year and month and day in lowly cell, so to chastise themselves for such like crimes, were cavaliers accustomed in those times, albeit of Charles and Agrament the more, had heard the several fortunes while away, not to forswear himself, he armed no more. Then if in not concerned in that affray. But when the year and month were wholly o'er. And wholly past was the succeeding day. With other courser, harness, sword. And lance. The king betook him to the court of France. He neither lighted from his horse, nor bowed. His head, and, without sign of reverence due. His scorn for Charlemagne by gestures showed and the high presence of so fair a crew. Astound and full of wonder stood the crowd. Such license in that haughty man to view. All leave their meat, all leave their talk, to hear. The purpose of the stranger cavalier. To Charles and to Rogero opposite. With a loud voice, and in proud accent, I. A. M. Rodamont of Sarza, said the knight. Who thee, Rogero, to the field defy. And here, before the sun withdraws his light, will prove on thee thine infidelity. And that thou, as a traitor to thy lord, deserves not any honor at this board, albeit thy felony be plain and clear, which thou, as christened, canst not disavow, nathless to make it yet more plain appear. This will I prove upon thee. And, if thou, Canst find a knight to combat for thee here. Him will accept, if one be not enow. Will four, nay six accept. And will maintain. My words against them all enlisted plain. Rogero, with the leave of Pepin's son. Uprose at that appeal, and thus replied. That he, nor he alone, but every one. Who thus impeached him as a traitor, lied. That so he by his king had ever done. Him none could justly blame. And on his side. He was prepared in listed field to shew. He evermore by him had done his due. He can defend himself, nor need he crave. Another warrior's help that course to run. And tis his hope to show him he would have. Enough, perhaps would have too much, of one. Thither Orlando and Rinaldo, Brave. Olivier, and his white and sable son, 586. Thither good Duden and Marfisa wend. Who fain with that fierce Paynim will contend. They tell Rogero that, as newly wed, the combat he in person should refuse. Take ye no further pains, the warrior said. For such would be for me a foul excuse. The Tartar's arms were brought, which cut the thread of more delay and of all further truce. With spurs Orlando decked the youthful lord. King Charlemagne begirt him with the sword. Marfisa and Bradamant in corslet case. His breast, and clothe him in his other gear. Astolfo led his horse of noble race. Sir Duden held his stirrup, far and near. Rinaldo and Namus made the mob give place. Assisted by the Marquis Olivier. All from the crowded lists they drive with speed. Evermore kept in order for such need. The pale-faced dames and damsels troop, in guise. Of pigeons round the lists, a timid show. When, homeward bound, from fruitful field they rise. Scared by wide-sweeping winds, which loudly blow. Mid-flash and clap. And when the sable skies. Threat hail and rain the harvest's waste and woe. 
a timid troop, they for Roger o fear. Ill matched they deem with that fierce cavalier. So him deemed all the rabble. And so most. Of those bold cavalier and barons thought. In that they had not yet the memory lost. Of what that painim had in Paris wrought. When singly fire and sword the warrior tossed. And much of that fair town to ruin brought. Whose signs remained, and yet will long remain. Nor ever greater havoc plague that reign. Bradamant's heart above those others beat. Not that she deemed the Saracen in might. Or valor which in the heart core hath its seat. Was of more prowess than the youthful knight. Nor, what oft gives success in martial feat. That with the painim was the better right. Yet cannot she her some ill misgivings quell. But upon those that love such fear sits well. Oh! In her fear for him, how willingly. She battle for Rogero would have done. If lifeless on the listed field to lie. Surer than sure, in fight with Yulian's son. 587. More than one death would she consent to die. If she withal could suffer more than one. Rather than she in that unhappy strife. Would see her cherished consort risk his life. But prayer availed not on the damsel's part. To make Rogero leave to her the quest. She then with mournful face and beating heart. Stood by to view that pair to fight at rest. From right and left the peer and pain him start. And at each other run with lance in rest. The spears seem ice, as they in shivers fly. The fragments birds, that mount through middle sky. Rodamont's lance which smote in the career. Upon mid-shield, yet harmed it little. So. Perfect was famous Hector's iron gear. Hardened by Vulcan's hand, and safe from blow. As well against the shield his leveled spear. Rogero guides, and that good buckler, though. Well steeled within and out, with bone between. And nigh a palm in thickness, pierces clean. And, but his lance resists not that fierce shock. And at the first assault its splinters fly. And bits and fragments of the shivered stock. Seem fledged with feathers they ascend so high. Were his arms hewn from adamantine rock. The spear would pierce the painim's panoply. And end that battle, but it breaks withal. And on their croups both staggering coursers fall. With bridle and with spur the martial pair. Raise their proud horses nimbly from the ground. And having broke their spears, with falchions bare. Return, to bandy fierce and cruel wound. Wheeling with wondrous mastery, here and there. The bold and ready coursers in a round. The warriors with their biting swords begin. To try where either's armor is most thin. Rodamont had not that hard dragon hide. Which heretofore had cased the warrior's breast. Nor Nimrod's trenchant sword was at his side. Nor the accustomed helm his temples pressed. For on that bridge which spanned the narrow tide. A loser to Dordona's lady 588 vest. And arms suspended from the votive stone. He left, as I, meseems, erewhile have shown. Clad was the king in other goodly mail. Yet not like that first panoply secure. But neither this, nor that, nor harder scale. Could Balisarda's deadly dint endure. Against which neither workmanship avail. Enchantment, temper, nor prime steel and pure. So here so there Rogero plied his sword. He more than once the Paynim's armor bored. When Rodamont beholds in that fierce close. His widely crimsoned arms, nor can restrain. The greater portion of those griding blows. From biting to the quick, through plate and chain. He with more fury, with more rage o'erflows. Then in midwinter the tempestuous main. Flings down his shield, and with both hands outright. Lays at Rogero's helm with all his might. With that excessive force, where with the gin. Erected in two barges upon pa. And raised by men and wheels, with deafening din. Descends upon the sharpened piles below. 
With all his might he smote the paladin. With either hand. Was never dire a blow. Him the charmed helmet helped, or, such its force. The stroke would have divided man and horse. As if about to fall, the youthful lord. Twice nodded, opening legs and arms. A new. Rodamont smote, in that he would afford. His foe no time his spirits to renew. Then threatened other stroke, but that fine sword. Bore not such hammering, and in shivers flew. And the bold Saracen, bereft of brand. Was in the combat left with unarmed hand. But not for this doth Rodamont refrain. He swoops upon the child, unheeding aught. So sore astounded is Rogero's brain. So wholly overclouded is his thought. But him the Paynim well awakes again. Whom by the neck he with strong arm has caught. And gripes and grapples with such mighty force. He falls on earth. Pulled headlong from his horse. Yet leaps from earth as nimbly, moved by spleen. Far less than shame for on his gentle bride. He turned his eyes, and that fair face serene. Now troubled the disdainful warrior spied. She in sore doubt her champion's fall had seen. And well nigh at that sight the lady died. Rogero, quickly to revenge the affront. Clutches his sword and faces Rodamont. He at Rogero rode, who that rude shock. Shunned warily, retiring from his ground. And, as he passed, the Paynim's bridle took. With his left had, and turned his course around. While with his right he at his rider struck. Whom he in belly, flank and breast would wound. And twice sore anguish felt the monarch, gored. In flank and thigh, by good Rogero's sword. Rodamont, grasping still in that close fight. The hilt and pommel of his broken blade. Laid at Rogero's helmet with such might. That him another stroke might have dismayed. But good Rogero, who should win of right. Seizing his arm, the king so rudely swayed. Bringing his left his better hand to speed. That he pulled down the Paynim from his steed. Through force or skill, so fell the Moorish lord. He stood his match, I rather ought to say. Fell on his feet, because Rogero's sword. Gave him, twas deemed, advantage in the fray. Rogero stands aloof, with wary ward. As fain to keep the Paynim king at bay. For the wise champion will not let a white. So talk and bulky close with him in fight. Rogero flank and thigh died red beheld. And other wounds, and hoped he would have failed. By little and by little, as it welled. So that he finally should have prevailed. His hilt and pommel in his fist yet held. The pain him, which with all his might he scaled. At young Rogero, whom he smote so sore. The stripling never was so stunned before. In the helmet cheek and shoulder bone below. The child was smit, and left so sore astound. He, tripping still and staggering to and fro. Scarce kept himself from falling to the ground. Rodamont fain would close upon his foe. But his foot fails him, weakened by the wound. Which pierced his thigh, he overtasked his might. And on his kneepan fell the Paynim knight. Rogero lost no time, and with fierce blows. Smote him in face and bosom with his brand. Hammered, and held the Saracen so close. To ground he bore that champion with his hand. But he so stirred himself, again he rose. He gripes Rogero so, fast locked they stand. Seconding their huge vigor by address. They circle one another, shake, and press. His wounded thigh and gaping flank had sore. Weakened the vigor of the Moorish king. Rogero had address, had mickle lore. Was greatly practiced in the wrestler's ring. He marked his vantage, nor from strife forbore. And, where he saw the blood most freely spring. And where most wounded was the warrior, pressed. The pain him with his feet, his arms, and breast. Rodamont filled with spite and rage, his foe.
takes by the neck and shoulders, and now bends towards him, and now pushes from him, now raises from earth, and on his chest suspends, whirls here and there and grapples, and to throw. The stripling sorely in that strife contends. Collected in himself, Roger wrought. To keep his vantage taxing strength and thought. So shifting oft his hold, about the moor. His arms the good and bold Roger o wound. Against his left flank shoved his breast, and sore. Strained him with all his strength and girdled round. At once he passed his better leg before. Rodamont's knees and pushed. And from the ground. Uplifted high in air the Moorish lord. Then hurled him down head foremost on the sward. Such was the shock wherewith King Rodamont. With battered head and spine the champion smote. That, issuing from his wounds as from a font. Streams of red blood the crimsoned herbage float. Rogero, holding fortune by the front. Lest he should rise, with one hand griped his throat. With one a dagger at his eyes at rest. And with his knees the panem's belly pressed. As sometimes where they work the golden vein. Within Pannonian or Iberian cave. In unexpected ruin whelm the train. By impious avarice they're condemned to slave. So with the load they lie oppressed, with pain. A passage can their prisoned spirit have. No less oppressed the doughty pain him lay. Pinned to the ground in that disastrous fray. Rogero at his visor doth present. His naked poniard's point, with threatening cry. That he will slay him, save he yields, content. To let him live, if he for grace apply. But Rodamont, who rather than be shent. For the least deed of shame, preferred to die. Writhed, struggled, and with all his vigor tried. To pull Rogero down, and not replied. As mastiff that below the deerhound lies. Fixed by the gullet fast, withholding bite. Sorely bestirs himself and vainly tries. With lips besmeared with foam and eyes alight. And cannot from beneath the conqueror rise. Who foils his foe by force, and not despite. So vainly strives the monarch of Argier. To rise from underneath the cavalier. Yet Rodamont so twists and strives, he gains. The freedom of his better arm anew. And with the right hand, which his poniard strains. For he had drawn his deadly dagger too. Would wound Rogero underneath the reins. But now the wary youth the error knew. Through which he might have died, by his delay. That impious Saracen forthwith to slay. And smiting twice or thrice his horrid front. Raising as high as he could raise in air. His dagger, buried it in Rodamont. And freed himself with all from further care. Loosed from the more than icy course, to font. Of fetid Acheron, and hell's foul repair. The indignant spirit fled, blaspheming loud, 589. Erewhile on earth so haughty and so proud.